strong. everyone and welcome to another special edition of Sovereign Citizen Watch as yet another one of our Sovereign Citizen regulars has been found guilty and is going to jail. Well, he's already in jail, actually, as we'll see, but uh, our friend, the failed Power Ranger, Chili DeCastro, has been sentenced after being found guilty to six months in jail. So, we're gonna check that out. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Uh, we have other Sovereign Citizen stuff to look at as well, but we will go over uh, why Chili was originally arrested, um, briefly talk about all the continuances, and then watch the relevant parts of the trial. The trial was a one-day affair. It was about an hour, hour and a half long. Um, we'll skip probably the officer testimony because it wasn't super interesting, but uh, all the Chili stuff is great, so... We'll check that out and uh, have a good time. We are on a hype train also. Thank you everyone for that. Appreciate it. Um, if you're on YouTube, do me a favor and like the stream. It would help me out a lot. And also subscribe if you haven't already on YouTube. Let's see what I missed over on Twitch on the hype train. We are 55% to level two. Amber Pretzels, thanks for 24 months. That's a second anniversary. Much appreciated. Teradona says, happy Chili Gets Consequences Day. It's my favorite non-federal holiday. Overthought says there are a, here are 180 bits for no reason whatsoever. Well, whatever the non-reason is, I appreciate it. <laughs> Chicken Bit says someone say bits. Well, thank you very much for those. Overthought, thanks for gifting five tier one subs. Thank you. Getting close to the sub goal for the month. Very nice. Um, tea Time T, thank you for gifting a sub. How you doing, Tea Time T? Hopefully well. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, we should probably do some other stuff while we're doing the hype train. I don't want to get into the chili thing right away. Um, DM Trey, thanks for gifting two tier one subs. I feel bad when you gift subs because we, like, chat about conspiracy stuff off stream. I always feel like that's an acquaintance of mine giving me gifts. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Bubble Homestead says maybe he can direct a jailhouse version of Power Rangers. I'd watch that. I'd watch that. Speaking of which, people got me stuff from my wish list, uh, which I wanted to thank people for. Um, Kingpin, a uh, funny, haven't seen it in many years, but a uh, 90s, early 2000s. What year was it, actually? 96. So yeah. There's actually, this has theatrical and the R-rated version. That's nice. 
So I got this, thank you very much. And then um, this one's exciting. The Doctor Who Daleks in Color special they did where they recently colorized the original Dalek story and edited it into a new Who format, which I heard was certainly an experiment and I'm excited to see it because there are parts that I think will probably work really well and not. They basically took a, a classic Who episode and re-edited it into a new Who episode in terms of pacing and just as like an editing experiment that sounds very interesting to me so i'm curious how that'll be um thank you whoever sent me these um i have a wish list as people know has lots of blu-rays and books and comics on it um it's a wish list i use personally so if you click on it and you're like there's expensive shit on here hannah's a bitch no i don't expect people to get me most of that stuff it's my personal wish list it's just public for you guys because sometimes people like to get me gifts which is very generous, um, so thank you for people who do that. Just a fan of the stock? Just like the stock. Thanks, DM Trey. I promise I won't pull you in front of Congress for any reason. KBS666 with a 29-month sub says, Chili going to jail sub. My favorite kind of sub, other than myself. Look to camera. That's, that's what you gotta do. Sometimes you gotta be lazy and just mug at the camera. Starry Beauty, thank you for gifting five tier one subs. See, the mugging works. <laughs> thank you very much. Generous and gets us over another level of the hype train. While we are doing the hype train, let's watch this brief three minute clip from Viceland. Um, oh, I should also point out, I am streaming again on YouTube um, because I mentioned this yesterday, but if you weren't here yesterday, got a new internet thing that should extend the Wi-Fi and strengthen it up here. My bars are much better. So that's why I'm dual streaming again. If things get choppy, let me know. But hopefully it should be better than it has been because now I have better access to the internet up here. Woohoo! <laughs> Fair DM try. 9% to level 4. I went to go hang out with Ernie and his mates. <laughs> well, I say mates. Other stuff. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how these people know each other. I don't know how they meet each other either. How do you meet another internet? They're like a, a, a Tinder-like app. <laughs> That's called the Tinder of the fire to burn down the system. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't know how they meet each other. What's that uh, app? Telegram. Telegram for a lot of them. Garotz, thanks for 15 months. Says Chilito goes to jail today was a good day. Oh, Ch uh, Chilito goes to jail. Today was a good day. <laughs> Mr. Blast, thanks for 100 bits. Hi, welcome to Montana, the state. Yeah. <laughs> really cold, you know, I, I got new makeup spun. I, this is... Why am I even saying that? Fuck it. I'm a... Mm. Let me reset real quick. I got new makeup sponges, and they work really well. I guess I didn't get them, but I found a bag of them. And holy shit, looking in the camera, my makeup looks a lot smoother than it normally does. <laughs> All right, Annie. This is Jamali. It's a lovely home. Oh I my god, it's books. the living man! How to resist the federal tyranny. And this is Barack Obama's favorite book, Rules for Radicals. <laughs> Because when I think radical, I think Barack Obama, he was a former president of the United States. Radical? Oh, yes. Was he a communist? Yeah. I don't believe anything about him. No? No, because he showed no records of his, his uh, college days. He literally showed his long-form birth certificate because a bunch of racist people kept being racist. What are you talking about? Amber Pretzel says, I'd ask if Chil Chilium would learn his lesson after this time in the chi in the clink, but I doubt he'll learn and only triple down while shrieking he was in a torture box and cuffs the whole six months. Oh yeah, he's going to use this to bolster his presence on the internet for sure. Um, Peter Vander, or wait, Peter Vander Vleet, Vleet 68 says, happy Chilean jail day. Thank you. Mm. His birth certificate, nothing. But there he are did. He did, though. I can't tell if she just doesn't know or if she 
just thinks it's a conspiracy, the birth certificate he released. Pictures of him in Indonesia. Do you think you people see you as a bit, a bit kooky? Well, you know, people don't understand what's really going on in this country. Mm. And, and they listen to the news. Mm. They're, they're like in a shell, in a bubble. Mm. And soon that bubble's going to... Unlike her bubble, which is much smaller and more comfortable. First, mm. and they're going to be without food, without water, you know, mm. and they don't... Waterfalls out of the sky, actually. Starry Night, thanks for 35 stream streak. They don't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rainwater collection, I believe, is illegal in Michigan, isn't it? Mr. Blast would know. Dude, that seems like the kind of thing you would know off the top of your head. Is rainwater collection barrels, are they illegal in Michigan? The thing is, you, you, no? even if you don't believe it, just That's not prepare from Mr. in case of the worst. Well, I know it's that's why you get if you get like a rainwater barrel, usually it has stuff in it that filters the water. It has like whatever it is, stuff that filters water. The builder AR15. <laughs> I really hope people need generic weird trivia knowledge in the post apocalypse, otherwise I'm no use at all. Some areas, okay. Um Starry Beauty says I don't know how they can feel so comfortable living in fear of the whole world around them at all times. I mean, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't seem like a person who would have a book about how to build build an AR-50. You're talking about how you like, you know, cooking organic well, stuff I and reading. Well, I that in case their mind breaks down. <laughs> do you have an AR-50? You have an AR-50. Chili signed a sixty thousand dollar contract for someone else's else's lawyer, and he has to pay six thousand a month. Do you have a source on that? Because I'd be very curious where people are getting that information and why he would do such a thing seen rifle yeah, that's crazy you watch a lot of tv i haven't seen television for 45 years 45 years so you ain't seen the wire or nothing he hasn't seen seinfeld he hasn't seen welcome back cotter he hasn't seen sliders he hasn't seen star trek the next generation much less deep space nine he's completely unaware of the dominion war <laughs> yeah how long have you been how long have you sort of lived like this for at 15, all I want to do is be married, have children and a family. That seems not great. Like, I guess if you're, like, if you're, if as a kid, like, you, that's your goal is to be like a, that, I guess that's fine, but it feels a little myopic. But, like, whatever. There's a reason we don't let 15-year-olds do whatever they want, I guess. <laughs> Are you married now? No. He doesn't know about Mork and Mindy. Nanu, Nanu. Um, I was 18 because I realized a marriage license means it's... You don't need to see Seinfeld Halloween Town. It's the kind of thing that's a victim of its own success and that if you watch it now, having never seen it, you'd be like, why is this considered so special? Why is this considered... Why was this so famous? And it's because it introduced a lot of things that, like, other series are just do all the time now. It's illegal. The cast of characters that are just despicable, the irreverent humor, the observational day-to-day -day stuff. Like Friends, yeah. It, just, it invented and, and created a lot of tropes that just, you know, so common it feels cliche. Who are you to tell me what woman I want to spend the rest of my life with and I can or cannot unless I pay you a bribe? I mean a tax. Yeah. But you see, we're so ingrained into doing this. Very taxation is theft. I do anything. Oh, I'm 100%. I'm 100% even if I'm in jail, though it doesn't matter to me. I'm always 100%. How many times have you been in jail? I've been in jail uh, There he is. God times. damn, his hat keeps getting bigger. I respect that. I think that's where the living man's authority comes from, is the hat. He's the only one I see being relatively successful. It's the hat. He's uh, arrested 11 times, dragged through court. Um... Chili's own words, he's been holding collections for the past two months to get to the 6000 He also has to pay Blue Bacon $1,600, court order, and has agreed to collect money for Wanda Mees. I'll send you the streams where he's done this. I mean, him saying that could just mean he wants people to give him money. Like, I know the Blue Bacon thing's real, but, like, in terms of the lawyer thing, he could just be saying that to raise a bunch of money. I'm not making any fraud claims against Chili. Speculative. To me, he just feels griftery. So, if I were someone who was giving him money, I'd maybe question where it was going. But 
whatever. He's gone for six months, so. Or uh, was supposed to have been 12 times, but they vacated before I got there. Wow. Once for foraging for food without a license, and the other nine times for uh, refusing to violate my country's <laughs> Where's constitution. This When's this video from? You heard the living man was no longer that. This is from five years ago. I haven't seen him around either. I assumed he died. How long was he in jail for? It's everywhere from five to 30 days per time. That's a long time. Yeah, but it has a good purpose to it. In there, I have a captive audience and willing listeners. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, <sighs> so... With that out of the way, and with the hype train uh, through the station, let's go ahead and take a look at Chili's thing. Let's actually, we should take a look at the arrest first, maybe, to get context in case you missed it. This was months ago. This was a year ago. Speedy trial. Um, <laughs> that's actually because Chili kept pushing it back. Chili kept um, not showing up to court or asking for extensions many, many times. This is the arrest. Chili, for those who might not know, for whatever reason, if this is your first stream, Chili is a First Amendment auditor, or maybe he wouldn't call himself that. He calls himself a cop watcher. He goes around and he films cops, which, hey, that's great. Filming cops in the line of duty, I think, is a great thing. I think it's something people should do. But it's also something you need to do within the bounds of the law if you don't want to get in trouble. Because cops are often assholes. And if they have the ability to tell you to fuck off, they're gonna. So you need to do your best to work within the rules as they exist, unless you want to just get into more trouble and, like, cause the situation to get worse, as it does here. On top of that, Chili doesn't seem to actually give a shit about anything or the efficacy of what he is doing. He is in this, in my opinion, as basically a self-aggrandizing grift. He gets to feel like he's fighting the man, fighting pigs, and then he can look like he's doing something and people send him money. I don't get the feeling that he gives a shit about anyone or anything outside of himself. Again, these are my feelings. You can make your own judgments. So let's check this out. Chili, this was his arrest that he is in jail for now. And we'll look at the trial after. You good? Why, why'd they say uh, that you uh, were pulled over? He was convicted of um, obstruction. Because he walked up to this traffic stop. This person was pulled over. He doesn't just come up and film. Which filming from a distance. Certainly allowed. Um, he walked up and started interacting. With the person in the traffic stop. Don't do not do that. Don't do that. Before he releases. Oh I see. Like what a Oh I see. Oh gotcha. You can film but you need to stay away from my driver. Back up. So there's the first warning. You can film, which you can. Just stay away from the driver. Yeah, don't walk up to random people in the middle of traffic stops and, like, try and insert yourself. Robert Prokagom, thank you for eight months of membership on YouTube. Says one more month till the first YouTube sub baby. That's true. That's true. Back up, I'm gonna detain you. You're gonna detain me how? We'll which think of a special name for that. Right. Actually, I'm standing right here. I'm at least 10 feet away, officer. I gotta tell you, I'm a- He says 10 feet away because I believe in a single state that's the standard. I'm not sure which state it is. Might be Arizona. Not sure. Some state has a standard that it is 10 feet. Um, and Chile seems to be under the impression that that is a national standard. It is not. Usually the standard for most states, from what I could find, is out of the Arizona. Arizona's the one it is? Thank you. Arizona has the 10-foot rule, apparently. Um, otherwise, it is more vague. Uh, the officers generally have a lot of discretion in telling you, like, you need to stay out of our business. You need to be over there. You know what I mean? Constitutional law scholar. You could do... He calls himself a constitutional law scholar. We finally, in his court case, find out where he thinks he gets the right to call himself a constitutional law scholar, by the way. Would you believe it's because some other YouTube lawyer called him that once three years ago and he started calling himself that after that? Yeah. <laughs> Do whatever you want, but just understand something. Your name will go on the lawsuit. Mind your own fucking business. Mind your own business. I'm a member of the press. Go get in your car and do your job, little doggy. Go see her. You're being detained right now. Okay, then detain me. Oh, she's free, free, oh, you're gonna detain a journalist? 
2015, Rodriguez. Come over my car. Ah, don't, don't, don't put your hands on me. Come over. Don't my touch car. me. Don't put Come your over. fucking hands on me. I'm gonna put my hands on you know, you're not. Chili has a huge fear, as he's demonstrated many times, an anxiety around being controlled. I think that's one of the reasons he's drawn to this in terms of getting attention, because it also makes him feel empowered. Chili, like a lot of sovereign citizens or sovereign citizen types, doesn't like that they live within a society and that they are not the ultimate arbiter of authority. Now, no one is that ultimately. Even the president has people over them in some way, or people kind of being like, hey, what are you doing? Um... There's no one on Earth that has ultimate power over everything, but Chile is uncomfortable with anyone having any authority over him in any context, and it causes him to lash out. Um, he calls handcuffs torture cuffs, because psychologically, the pain is a lot for him. And to be clear, handcuffs can be put on you in a way where they are so tight that it hurts. Believe me, I know. Wink. <laughs> But I don't think that's primarily what he's talking about. When he talks about it, it becomes clear that the pain that he is primarily worried about is psychological. The feeling of having his agency stripped from him. At least that's what I see when I hear him talk about this stuff. Hey guys, make sure you guys get my, get my people on the phone. Oh, this is, so you ended the stop, you dunce cap. Did you just, did you just end the stop? So that's yes. a 2015 cap. Come over here to my car. No. Come over here. No. Bring your supervisor, please. Bring your supervisor, please. Don't touch me. You don't get to put your hands on me. Don't grab me. Don't grab me. This, you're not. Get, no, first get your supervisor out here. You're not just gonna grab me and throw me on the ground. You've already released the. You, you've already released her. This is right. He released her because now he's dealing with the unstable person in front of him, yelling and rambling. Chili, I I don't think he's ever said this. I'm not. I've gotten the feeling, as other people have, because he is kind of a gym bro, that he may be partaking in some sort of steroid. Which, as far as I'm concerned, would be his business. If people want to use steroids and understand the risks involved, I don't really care. They shouldn't be involved in, like, competitions and stuff, because that's not fair. But if they're using steroids for their own personal use, I don't really give a shit. However... Chili often comes off as agitated, as very agitated and on edge and angry, and I think the cop is picking up on that. On top of that, in this interaction, Chili has a thing where his lips get quite blue. I don't know if it's a poor circulation thing, or if that's a potential drug use thing, I don't know. But I think the cop is seeing a very agitated, irrational person acting angry with, like, kind of a strange thing going on and is maybe thinking that they are on drugs. I don't know that to be the case. That's just the vibe I'm getting. 2015 Rodriguez versus United States. You're walk I'll walk right in front of your car. Let's go. Sure, come on. Come on. You don't think he'd be in anywhere near as much trouble if he wasn't insulting the cops? I would agree with that. I would agree. Come on. And I don't necessarily even think that's fair. In a fair world... Yeah, you being an asshole probably wouldn't matter, like, if all police were robots that were just there to, like, you know. But that's not how human interaction works, so, you know, maybe don't put yourself at a lot more risk of trouble just to get some sort of ego satisfaction in the moment. Just get a lawyer. Just shut the fuck up and get a lawyer. No, no. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a constitutional law scholar. You can't take away Set my the phone. phone down on I'm, the hood. I'm now. He's a constitutional law scholar for realsies. They're being detained. Please, they're being detained. You're, now you're going to put hands on me. No, no, wh Come over here. Why are, you why are you grabbing me? Come over here. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, over here. The phone roll. I don't what, care about what, the phone. Why are you grabbing Turn me? Turn around. I'm a Turn member around. of the press. Turn around. I'm not doing anything. You're being detained. I'm not right doing anything. I remember from the cop's point of view, too, there was a body cam that we watched, and it became clear that as he tried to apprehend him, Chili goes to perhaps strike at the officer. Anyway, so now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and take a look at the trial. Up to and including his sentencing and arrest uh, for that. Here's a video of Chili crying after reaching the $6,000 goal for Press with Rancor's law bill. We have reached the goal. 
Oh, God. Thank you guys so much. We have reached the goal. So here it is right here. Rudolph sent in 50. Drophead, 74. Below sent in 500. And then Toots Vape Shop. Tooters, you didn't even read. They gave you $1,000 and you couldn't even read their name correctly? So we have. I'll have all of you know if anyone gives me a thousand dollars, I'll say your name correct. <laughs> Reach the goal, and then Felicia put in seven hundred dollars for Tabitha Smith, and that money, she said to me, transfer over to Press with Ranker and to Hendry. So we have reached the goal for this month. Okay, I'm seeing why he got fired from Power Rangers. He's not a very good actor, is he? I want to say thank you to all of you who donated. Jessica Kerstad, John, John L. Let's go TVO, Amy. Yeah, he's got... This is... Oh, no. Because he has... he's crying physically. Like, tears are coming out of his eyes. But he doesn't have any of the emotional affect of someone who's actually in the state of mind of crying like this. There's not the... <laughs> He's, <laughs> he's trying to sexy cry. <laughs> Me, shock professor. Drop. Jesus Christ. Okay, let's watch his fucking trial. <sighs> Ugh. Which version of Power Rangers was he on? He was casted as the Black Ranger in Power Rangers Wild Force and then was replaced. So he's not actually in the show. Um, but he was going to be, but like the first week of shooting, he got fired and replaced. Because Power Rangers was always a powerhouse of good acting. How dare you? All right, Paul was he to Castro. You're telling me it didn't take Shakespearean level skill to deliver the line, too much pink energy is dangerous? I won't stand for this slander. This is bullshit. So, while we watch this, I want to be clear decorum in court is important and the way you treat other people in court will be noted by the judge so don't be an asshole because yes the judge will use that to determine whether or not they should be nice lenient or throw the book at you don't piss off the judge they're the judge you're fucked tea with goblins says Morning, Hannah. Got a swanky promotion at work, so can't catch you live as often these days, but I've always... It's always marvelous to see you in all your fierce femme foil finery flinging ferocious fire at fools and fuckwits. Forsooth. Ooh, that was fun to say. Thank you. Thank you for the words. Good morning, Agnes Patel. Are you Mr. DeCastro? Hey, can, can you turn off your phone, please? The one yeah, that's in I'm your just, hand. Just finishing up with my lawyer. He's on his way here now. I'm just waiting for him to get there. This is pretty great. They take his phone away and he gets like really upset that they take his phone. All right, I'm gonna wait for your attorney, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Jose Castro, 23 CR 013015. Good morning, Your Honor. Agnes Patello and Lindsay Kane for the record. Good morning, State. Good morning, Mike. Me on behalf of the Defendant's Press with Pizza this morning. So I have signed two media requests that permit recording or photographing these proceedings, but I have not granted any other requests to record or live stream these proceedings. So, so some people in the gallery were given waivers to film. Chili was not. So she's basically saying, Chili. You cannot film, which it didn't matter anyway. It's being filmed like we're watching it right now. So, I need Mr. DeCastro and everybody else who wants to stay in the courtroom. 
to surrender their phones, or you can leave. Power your phone, help you, and I'll take one from you. Any Mr. DeCastro to empty all of his pockets. What's that? Yeah. Empty your pockets, Chili. She just said because you're not allowed to have a phone. Because sovereign citizens have a tendency to film illegally their court appearances in their pockets. Your pockets and give up your phone to the judge. I have to give you my phones? Yeah. <laughs> I have to. I like that he said phones plural, which gave away that he had multiple phones. I feel like if he had handed one phone. Maybe they wouldn't have checked again, but the fact that he said phones gave it up. Oh. Yep. I don't really want to be part of your YouTube channel. So. You already are. I don't want to be part of your YouTube channel. I get the impression that she's familiar with his channel. I think she looked it up and is like, oh shit, this is what this guy does? <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Great. You already are. Awesome. I'm not going to get into this guy, though. I'll get into someone else. I'm no, no. They're going to go to my marshal. <laughs> he tried to hand it to someone else. <laughs> Again, he just doesn't like to be told what to do in any context. Excuse me? I said he's a pig. Did I know dozens of people warned both the judge and the prosecution he and his supporters would stream the court hearing? Fair. Fair. Very fair. Okay. So I'm not going to permit you to speak to anybody in my courtroom in that manner. Oh, yeah. Did he call him a pig in that moment? I missed it. Um, boy, I just walked in on some fun news. Oh, yeah, Skifazoa. Today's the day. He actually doesn't live in Las Vegas. He just goes there a lot. He lives in his car and travels around the country and does this stuff. He's a pig. He's a pig. <laughs> He just said he, he's a pig. <laughs> okay. So don't insult anyone in the courtroom. That's a bad idea. Insulting people in the courtroom is a bad idea if you don't want the judge to be mad at you. No matter how justified you feel, don't insult people in the courtroom, especially not the bailiff or anyone who works in the courtroom. The judges are not going to deal with that. They're going to be like, what is wrong with you? I work with these people every fucking day. Excuse me? I said he's a pig. Okay. So I'm not going to permit you to speak to anybody in my courtroom in that manner. And if you don't want to apologize, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I apologize to the court, Your Honor. No, you can apologize to... They've done nothing to you. Actually, Your Honor... I love that. I love that he's like, I'll apologize to the court. And she's like, no, apologize to the guy. <laughs> she doesn't put up with any of his shit. I really appreciate it. I like even more so that she's a woman because I get the feeling that Chili's a bit sexist. So I am glad that he's being put in his place by a woman. That's pretty fun. I'm basing the sexism claims off of um, the... Uh, protection order that was filed against him and granted by an ex-girlfriend who claimed he tried to murder her and her boyfriend. Allegedly. Kariko, 59, thanks for 11 months. You know what made me... I, I've listened and read the, um, which we should go through at some point, the restraining order that his ex-girlfriend had written, um, you know, the request for. And, you know, there's always that idea of, like, there's always that idea of, like, oh, you know, as much as I don't like chili, you know, you, you know, it is uh, someone making claims. How do you, for sure, it's real. In the thing she wrote, she said he, quote, to, like, her new boyfriend, chili said something along the lines of, like, you want to go at it, homeboy? And I was like, this happened. Because chili calls people homeboy all the time in really weird like there's not is there a right context to call someone your homeboy like i don't i not for me probably not for chili comes off as weird so when i read that and i saw her quote him as saying you want to come at me homeboy i was like fuck that happened that a hundred percent happened because no one would make up that detail that's so chilly <laughs> That I need. I just couldn't. At that moment, I was like, this is true. This is 100% true. 
No, he still says it today. He says it today. He still says it. Came over and gave me a directive for no reason, sir. Tell me what to do. Okay, well, I, I again, telling me what to do. That's his primary concern here. Listen again. Actually, Your Honor, when you were here, he came over and gave me a directive for no reason, sir. Tell me what to do. When you weren't here, he came over and gave me a directive and started telling me what to do. Chili is allergic to anyone telling him to do anything. He doesn't like it. Okay, well, I, I have all the respect and welcome to the court. I follow the rule of law all the time. I no, it is, the it is their, their job to maintain the safety and security of the court. I agree with you, Your Honor. So, if you want to speak like that in my court... I don't think Chuds will see this Italian Shakespeare. And even Chuds aren't generally sovereign citizens unless they're hyper-militia types, so, no. Court room, I'm going to hold you in contempt. And if I hold you in contempt, you're going to jail. That is not my wish. Okay? All right. So I need to you to empty your pockets too. Suit pocket, pants pocket. This is this is illegal. This is this is a violation of my Fourth Amendment. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. I don't have any recording devices on me. What are you talking about? How about you? Suit jacket. <laughs> I don't have anything on me. This is preposterous. No, it's this not. really is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Give me a earphone too. Oh. I just love the no, it's not. Putting everything. <laughs> They have, they have Chili and Daryl Brooks should collab sometime. I think Daryl will be in jail a bit longer than Chili, so... A media request. Right, and I'm, I'm not recording anything. Is it your your guy here took my phone, so he's not, his phone's not on? Right. Take the lawyer's phone, too? According to a few people who saw the pre-case footage, Chili had his feet up on the bench in front of him and was told to take his feet down by the court officer. He made a big stink about it, still waiting on the footage of that. Oh yeah, that sounds like him. <laughs> if he did that, that's ridiculous. Italian Shakespeare wants me to look up incarcerated in the Black's Law Dictionary. I can do that. No, I'm not going to take the lawyer's phone. He's an officer of the court. Oh, was there a All previous right. one I missed? Are they off? The, well, there's a hiker. All right. Good. All right. All right, this is the time set for the trial of State of Nevada versus Jose, Jose De Castro, 22 CR 013015. Is the state ready to proceed? Yes, we are, Your Honor. How many witnesses do you have? We just take one. All right, is the defense ready to proceed? The one witness is um, yes, right. the cop. All right. I have your request to convert counsel to standby counsel. The judge knew he was going to scream clandestinely. Oh, yeah. Counsel, I'm going to deny that request. Um, either you represent him or. He should have previously requested a Beretta canvas to represent himself. That I just consider that a delay tactic, so that request is denied. Are you ready to proceed otherwise? I'm assuming you are. Yes, sir. All right. Will the state please call the first witness? Yes, Your Honor. The state calls Brandon Moore, and he's in the ante room. <laughs> See imprisonment. <sighs> do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please be seated. State your name for the record and spell it first and last name, please. It's Brandon Bork. Imprisonment. The detention of a person contrary to his will, the act of putting or confining a person in prison, the restraint of a person's personal liberty, coercion, etc. Coercion exercised upon a person to prevent the free exercise of his powers of locomotion. It is not a necessary part of the definition that the confinement should be in a place usually appropriated to that purpose. It may be in a locality used only for the specific occasion, or it may take place without the actual application of any physical agencies of restraint, such as locks or bars, as by verbal compulsion and by the display of available force. Every confinement of the person is an imprisonment, whether it be in prison or a private house or even by forcibly detaining one in public streets. Any unlawful exercise or show of force by which person is compelled to remain where he does not wish to be. See also solitary confinement. There you go. Brandon is B-R-A-N-D-E-N, Bork, 
B O U R Q U E. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you. Sir, good morning. Good morning. Honey. All right. So, uh, sir, how are you employed? This I'm is pretty boring, if I'm being honest. Day. They just go over. It's typical. They just go over the video. They just go over the video of him doing the thing. I'm gonna go to the part where it's time for Chili to be on the stand. Or rather, sorry, let's do the cross. The direct isn't that interesting. Let's do the cross with Chili's attorney. And then I'll move on to Chili's testimony. They don't even bother to do cross with Chili, by the way. They just do direct. The prosecution doesn't even bother. <laughs> Which is a little bit of a shame, but I get it. Good morning, all, sir. How are you? Good morning, sir. I'm well. How are you? Very well. Um, how many feet did you order the defendant to back up specifically? He did. I never had an opportunity to give him an exact distance. You just said back up. How far back did you intend to have him back up? What would cross-examining Chili even get you? Content for my stream. <laughs> In the background of the video, you can see that there was a parked semi-truck and a light pole. I would have directed him somewhere in that area, which would have been outside the 21 feet. Your testimony is you never told him an exact distance to back up, correct? Yes, you never allowed me to. What do you mean you never allowed me to? I asked him to back up and he continued arguing with me, so I could never specify exact distance for him. But you had time to give him five commands to back up, is that correct? Yes. Your testimony is he never backed up when you were giving him commands, is that correct? If he backed up, it may have been inches, but he didn't substantially back up. And you just reviewed the uh, body-worn camera from your, your chest, is that correct? Yes. Okay. You didn't notice him backing up every time you uh, directed him to back up? He did not back up. So you backed up zero feet, in your opinion? It's not video? zero feet. What was that? He didn't back up zero feet. He was moving his feet. As to exactly how far he moved back, I don't know. But it wasn't substantial. What would have been substantial in, in your opinion? Or, or what do you mean by that? I would have guided him if he wasn't arguing with me back toward the light pole and the park semi truck. And what would have again would have been outside of the 21 feet. That was so, my goal. So, in your opinion, you have the ability, or you would in any traffic stop, ask somebody to move back 21 feet, is that correct? Yes, for our training. And what was that training? That uh, while we're conducting lawful activity, we're allowed a reasonable distance to conduct our activity. But where do you get that 21 feet number from specifically? You literally said it's what they're, they're taught. Because the law is written the way that it is, it just says reasonable distance. They've decided that that reasonable distance is like 21 feet. Again, I, it annoys me because if Chili really feels that these things are unjust, then there would be a way to go about doing it. There would be a way to go about doing it and trying to basically procure a case and a team of lawyers that would intentionally have a situation and find a perfect case to test this and argue and try and get the federal government to set some sort of specific guideline. If you wanted to do that, you could. But Chili isn't the person to do it. Chili is a random guy who doesn't even want a lawyer and is only having one in this case because he was basically forced to. He said he wanted to stand by, but she was like, no, he's here. You didn't say you wanted to be your own attorney. He's your attorney. Right? I just... I don't know what Chili thinks he's doing. <laughs> That's taught to us in the academy. It's based on reaction time, normal human reaction time to a threat. So your position is anytime you're engaged in any law enforcement activity... Because 21 feet is the minimum distance you can draw and shoot someone if they're closing in on you with a knife? Jesus Christ! You would create a 21 feet perimeter? Not necessarily. It depends on other environmental factors such as obstacles and barriers. This is a private attorney so he hired. So your testimony is that every time you conduct a traffic stop, as long as there's no barriers, you would order a pedestrian to back up 21 feet. Is that correct? I would, yes. Okay. What training do you have in regards to the First Amendment? It's standard academy training. Can you 
explain what that entails. Usually includes a classroom setting, uh, PowerPoint taught by police officer, uh, academy officer. Uh -huh. Do you remember receiving that training specifically? Yes. How long ago was that? When I was first employed about eight years ago. Do you have any follow-up training? They keep trying to make it a First Amendment thing, and it just, like, first isn't. Amendment, we've had some follow-up training uh, regarding First Amendment auditors. Okay, can you explain what that follow-up training was? The follow-up training was just uh, a refresher on the First Amendment and how the department wants to handle or react to First Amendment auditors. In that training, did they explain any case law governing how many feet somebody has to move back or anything like that? Objection, Your Honor, at this point, uh, of relevance. I think it's beyond the scope of you know the charges that were to determine guilt um, on at this time. Can you tell me what's the relevance? Yes, Your Honor. Um, he detained the defendant after issuing commands back up a particular distance. He's testified he's received training. Um, I should be entitled to cross-examine him about what that training is and how he's coming up with uh, the specific numbers he's using to, to I think her objection was with respect to the case law that you're inquiring about. Your Honor, our position is if he is issuing commands that are contrary to that case law and he's been uh, But he's training. not. He's not, though. On that case law, then. You haven't demonstrated that or even really yeah. claimed that. He wasn't arrested for filming. He was arrested for not getting further back. So I'm going to sustain the objection and ask you to move along. Have you had any prior issues um, enforcing the First Amendment? No. Um, prior to this event taking place, had you heard of Jose de Castro? No. It's a bizarre question. I think recall? Chile told his lawyer to say that because I think Chile really thinks the cops are out to get him and doesn't understand that the vast majority of people do not know who he is. Like, you and I know who he is because we cover this kind of thing, but sovereign citizens, both sovereign citizens themselves and people like me who find them interesting, are a very niche internet small sub-community like no one knows who he is when you first heard about the first amendment waters have i seen any sob sits on social media say they support chili um i saw a few on his he had a video that was scheduled to go up today on his channel and it did and there were some comments that were supporting him but other than that no i'm sure they exist i just don't spend a lot of time on sovereign citizen forums or anything or whatever the equivalent is typically it would have been in the academy. So that was when you were first trained? You, you had heard about the auditors back then? Yes, when we were... Okay. No offense, I'm just going to move ahead to Chili's thing, because, just going to be honest, not super interesting hearing the lawyer he hired try and tout his bullshit. Uh, do you recall during... Your Honor, I call Jose de Castro. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is his moment. This is Chili's you can't handle the truth moment. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. There he is. Mr. DeCastro, before you testify, I'm obligated to inform you that you have the right to testify in this proceeding, but you also have the right to remain silent. And should you choose to remain silent, I may not hold that against you in making my decision. Um, always... I, d I did actually save a link to the documents um, a while back, but thank you for the link. I'll save it on my desktop. I already had it saved on my phone, but that is helpful. Thank you. This is the protection order from his ex-girlfriend that claimed he tried or claimed he threatened and stalked her and her boyfriend. Do that. 
I do. Would you still wish to testify? Yes, I do. Right, please go ahead. You have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. Can you um, give some insight into what that channel is about? Objection, relevance. The relevance. Your Honor, the relevance is that we're presenting a First Amendment defense and... It's a bad defense. It's a bad defense. Defendant. It's not the, it's not what the case is. As a member of the press, um, there's different standards for First Amendment rulings where there's public policy at issue. Um, we can't give insight into that. I'm gonna allow it. I feel it. like he's thinking really hard about what what he's trying to get across on his face. Let's see where it goes. The American flag pin. Is he taking notes right now? Yes, I do have first. I, I do have a YouTube channel, and the reason I have a YouTube channel is because of how many cops kill people every year, how many cops hurt, maim, torture, rape, and kill people every single year. It Again, he's monologuing. He's trying to get clips he can use for YouTube. It's such an epidemic that the rest of the world. I get thousands of emails saying only in America does this happen. I started filming cops because. When I was cheated in 2002, objection at this point. Uh, relevant. He's opining. He's opining from the bench. Well, this is the British Greenland member of the press. This narrative. So, can you ask him a question? Yes, right. Yep. What type of film do you make for your YouTube channel? This is not the. A lot of. Ah! You're not giving. Stop giving him jumping off points. This is not here for him to opine. Ask direct questions that can be answered with yes or no or brief, like, short answers. Jesus. Tea with Goblin says you can pinpoint the moment where the epic music in his head swells to a heroic crescendo. I only film police in their official capacity. I'm known across the country and across the world. He's known across the world. And why uh, do you engage in that type of so I'm going to ask you, Mr. Me, to direct your questions about the incident in question. The reason I was filming Mr. Gore that day? Objection, Your Honor. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. So there wasn't a question posed. So I'm oh, not sure what Mr. DeCastro, um, on the dating question, why did you approach that vehicle? I was filming that cop. Sure, it's what Chili paid for, though. I'm. Why did the like it was the, uh, in my head? I'm trying to figure out. Did this lawyer just need the money and was like, this isn't going to win, but like he's hiring me and I'll do it? Or does this lawyer actually think that this is true? Neither are great. Because that's what I do for a living. I am a member of the press and I invoke my right to be press. I always invoke my right to be press within the first 10 seconds of engaging. Okay, but if the press is within a certain distance and that distance is, like, shorter than the law says that you have to be, then the press still has to move. Like, it, it's like when they say, well, I'm the press, so you can't kick me out of the DMV. Like, Lois Lane sneaks into LexCorp because she's not allowed inside. If she gets caught, well, she probably gets put in, like, a, a murder device by Lex Luthor to trap Superman. But, like, more realistically, she'd be arrested. You can't just say, I'm the press, therefore laws don't apply to me. That's not how it works. A press badge or being the press is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. You can film, but you can't be doing illegal things while you film. It's not a shield legally against illegal activity. With police, and I have thousands of videos to prove this. So this is how you make money. This is not how specifically I make money. I make money from selling legal documents to people. Okay. <laughs> that feels like an admission of a different crime. He's a non-lawyer selling legal documents. Can you say that? Are you allowed to do that? Do you recall the officer telling you to back up? Yes, I do. And what did you do after he told you to back up? I took a couple steps back. I just showed him that I was willing to back up a little bit. However, if I may, in Arizona, they created a 10-foot law. You are not in Arizona. You are in Nevada, a different state than Arizona. 
so the rules are different. So much for constitutional law, scholar. Objection. Relevance for not in Arizona. Thank you. The state of Nevada. So I'm going to allow it because I think that goes to why he kept saying 10 feet in the video, even though um, I will take judicial notice that you're not in the state of Arizona, you're in the state of Nevada. I'm taking judicial notice that we're not in Arizona. Well, a federal judge took it down, Your Honor. And it does. Stop. Can you ask him a question? Yes, Your Honor. I He's trying to argue his case himself from 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 the from here, from the witness stand. Um. Approximately how many feet did you back up? I backed up a foot or two. I was at least 10 feet away from that car that the driver was pulled over in. Whoa! Okay, I don't even think the Arizona thing says 10 feet away from, like, the car. Pretty sure it's, like, 10 feet away from the police. So he's not even using his fake bullshit correctly. I shouldn't say fake. He's not using his misattributed case law correctly. And when you spoke to the driver, what did you say? Just asked her if she was okay. But the reason I filmed police is because they abuse people so often. Do you recall the officer telling you not to speak with the driver? Yes. And did you uh, make any statements to the driver after that command was given? Absolutely not. Did the officer ever give you a specific distance back up to? No, he didn't. If he did, would you have complied with that? Sure. Don't do that. Don't wish physical harm on people, please. It's against Twitch TOS, and it's also just kind of like not a good vibe. Did you believe you were complying with the officer's commands? 100%. I also informed him I'm a member of the press, I'm a constitutional law scholar, that this is what I do. Do you recall the officer explaining to you why he decided to arrest you? There's several parts to the reason why he said he was going to arrest me. He said he was going to arrest me because I wouldn't turn my head a certain direction. If I didn't turn and face the car with my head, that he would place me under arrest instead of just giving me a ticket. Do you recall him explaining why he decided to detain you before he arrested you? He decided to obtain me because he said I was obstructing, which from my understanding is a physical act where I would have to get in the way. He said that the driver... I don't think obstruction is a physical act. I could be wrong on that one, but I don't think it necessarily is. I ever deserved privacy. I believe my First Amendment rights are not up for feelings. My First Amendment rights aren't up for feelings. This isn't about your First Amendment. This is about a First Amendment joke. Did he explain to you that the- Lennon Cat, what do you want me to look up, look up for the Black's Law Dictionary request? Obstruction? The basis of your detention was makes sense related primarily to the issue this is the sixth edition order. by the way this is very out of date we do this for fun but this is not the up-to-date black law dictionary so you know don't take any of this as legal advice the issue of you backing up well i think from the officer's testimony we can see that he's scared of the driver scared of me scared of everything they teach them to be afraid of everything so i had two cameras out it's Identified as a member of the press. I'm sorry, repeat the question. I, I, I want to get it specific for the record. Sure. Um, the question was, did the officer explain to you that the basis of your detention... Um, obstruct to... Well, obstructing... Did you mean... Obs oh. We'll do obstruct and then obstructing justice. Obstruct to hinder or prevent from progress. Check. Stop. Also, to retard progress of, make accomplishment or difficulty to... Or to slow. To be or come in the way of or to cut off the sight of an object, to block up, to interpose obstacles, to render impassable, to fill with barriers or impediments as to obstruct a road or way. Obstructing justice. Impeding or obstructing those who seek justice in a court or those who have duties or powers of administering justice therein. The act by which one or more persons attempt to prevent or do prevent the execution of lawful process. 
The term applies also to obstructing the administration of justice in any way, as by hindering witnesses from appearing, assaulting process servers, influencing jurors, obstructing court orders, or criminal investigations. Any act, conduct, or directing agency pertaining to pending proceedings intended to play on human frailty and to deflect and deter courts from performing their duty and to drive it into compromise with its own unfettered judgment by placing it through medium of knowingly false assertion in wrong position before public constitutes an obstruction to administration of justice. So no, this is an out-of-date one, but it doesn't say it needs to be physical. It's in any way... Hindering the legal process. Screaming at the radio with uh, 34 months says, Note, seems like Twitch moved the Prime option to the Elevate Your Sub tab in case others struggle to find it like I did. Good to know. Um, H. Farid says, because he keeps saying it. Press. <laughs> Press. Pull. Pull. <laughs> <laughs> was because of you not backing up or because of the privacy issue of the drive? It was both. He said that, he told me to back up, I backed up a little bit, then he said, she deserves privacy, and then I told him to go get your car, little doggy, and write your ticket. And at that... <laughs> he just says it. He just says it. So then I called him a dog. At that point, his face turned beet red, and his veins and his neck stuck out because we were over 20 feet away. And you had to holler to hear each other because the wind was probably 30 miles an hour. They weren't over 20 feet away at that point. We've seen the video. Did you at any point um, attempt to hit any of the officers involved? No, absolutely not. Did you uh, intentionally swat any of the officers? Absolutely not. He was giving me unlawful commands. I should not have been detained after I identified as a member of the press. If he ever reached a hand out towards um, me, I Peachy, wrestled Royal a and Royal so and thank you for following. reaction as I'm retreating from somebody, if I may have put my hand up, as he said, as he testified himself, I certainly am a law-abiding citizen. I don't break the law. So I would not have tried to assault an officer under any circumstances. How many times on this channel have we heard Chili threaten police officers and talk about how much he could beat their asses constantly. Is it possible that... Like, literally in that video, he, like, tells the cop, like, he could beat you up. Uh, during the interaction, there was inadvertent contact between me and the officer. Sure, he decided to go hands-on with me when he was giving me unlawful commands. And there was absolutely no reason for it. I was willing to comply with anything he asked within reason. Because I don't want to have a fist fight with another street, with another man on the street. Do you recall the officer ordering you to go to his patrol vehicle? I do. And what did you do in response to that? Initially, I told him no, but then when he began to get physical with me and start to grab me and touch me, I said, okay, I'll go over to your car. His car was 35 feet away. I then led him to his car. It's on video. You can see it. I would walk right up to his car, and then he insisted still on grabbing me. After he saw me pull out an additional phone, which... That's what press people do. We have lots of cameras on. You're not the press. I'm so tired. And At no you, point does this have to do with your First Amendment. You informed uh, the officer that you were a member of the press. Oh, several times. There's, it's in the it's in the transcripts. I've trans. Real quick, I gotta take a quick break. Urinate. Grab some cheese. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Chair will tell you about. The, the 96 hit comedy, Kingpin, with Woody Harrelson, Randy Quaid, and Vanessa Angel. I'll be right back.
I've returned with a drink and my favorite cheese spread. By the way, if you haven't had it and you're like, damn, I want a good like cheese spread. William's Cheese, original ping conning gourmet spreadable cheese. Would recommend. If you're a fan of cheddar-y stuff, check it out. Um, sending you a fragile large package will arrive Saturday. Okay, ominous. Good to know. Hydrate. And let's continue with Chili's testimony. <sighs> Look at that nuclear orange. It's like, it's good. I described them myself several times. I told them I'm a member of the press. And I feel like more people should be friends with me because I have cheese and movies. Um, and those are two good things. So come be my friend and eat cheese and watch um, terrible horror movies. <laughs> All right. Let's go for real. And did you explain to the officer that... Um... Chili's going to jail? Chili's in jail. Can I turn it up? I can. One sec. Do you have a background in constitutional law? Yes, I told him I'm a constitutional law scholar, which was a moniker given to me by other people who are also... And some of the movies are cheesy. That's a good tagline. Hannah's Hannah's movie experience. The movies are as cheesy as the snacks. They have their own channels, their own press, and that's what some other lawyers on another channel called me three years ago. And I sense adapted the moniker. Thanks, Trey. And just to get some, I guess, further background, were you looking for a uh, police to report on this particular day? No. No, there's, there's the cops hide on the side of the road to pull people over. It's pretty regular in our country. I was just in the parking lot there. I saw that Mr. Bork had somebody pulled over, concerned for her safety. I began to film. And why do you think um, that law enforcement traffic stops are relevant to you? That's where most people get killed. <laughs> what movie do you get? Mm. You get. Time Quest with Bruce Campbell, who I think plays. I don't know who he plays in this, but Bruce Campbell's in it, and it's a time travel movie. I got it for like $5, and I haven't seen it yet. Thing. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Dude, I have no questions for this witness. Thank you. Sir, you step down. No cross examination. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Any argument by the state? Your Honor, the state uh, asked you to find the defendant guilty of first degree murder and the instructing of public officer as well as resisting a public officer charged against him. Um, the video very adequately portrays, and I don't think it's just. What cheese pairs well with the classic Clifford? The Martin Short film. Mm. Havarti. Little nuttiness. Muted by the defendant. Um, the, what the context was of the interaction with the officer. Um, I would venture to say that had the defendant just complied with the original order to not engage with the driver and to back up, we would. I need to back up a little bit. Sorry. The cheese is kind of uh, possessing me, so I need to back up and pay more attention. Andra Blow, what do you want me to wear for the hats off? Which hat? Can do. Um, the video very adequately portrays, and I don't think it's disputed by the defendant, um, the, what the context was of the interaction with the officer. Um, I would venture to say that had the defendant just complied with the original order to not engage with the driver and to back up, we wouldn't be here. He wouldn't have found himself further engaging with Officer Moore. Um, this is not a First Amendment issue. Um, as you heard over and over and over again um, on, on the video, Officer Moore did not have a problem with the defendant recording. It was a, it's, not a, it's not a First um, Amendment issue. It's an officer safety issue. Um, here, you have an officer who conducted a lawful traffic stop. You saw the nature of the stop. There was no animosity between the officer and the I driver. I saw H. Baird. It was rather peaceful. They were engaged, banter back and forth. 
Um, he would have, he, as he testified, he was trying to determine whether he was going to cite her or let her go with a warning. Um, and then you have the individual, the defendant, introduce himself to a situation. Traffic stops, Your Honor, are inherently dangerous, particularly in, in crowded parking lots. Uh, I guess anywhere, you know, I would venture to say. The officer had, was reasonable in thinking that anyone who would approach in the manner that the defendant approached um, this his scene um, would have a reason to fear for his safety or at least be suspicious of this individual's motives coming in. The officer had no problem with the recording. The officer had no problem with the defendant observing. It was when he inserted himself into this lawful detention that was occurring with the Hyundai driver that the officer turned his attention onto the defendant. This is not a First Amendment issue. This is an individual who took his work. What he oh, did. yeah, he does not look happy. Look at him. Jeesh. <laughs> he looks like he wants to yell at her. Jesus. Perceived to be his rights too far. The oh my god, I think he just broke a pencil in his hands. Did you hear the click when he, like, did this? Took his no, maybe he's just got a cap. He's pulling on and off. Too far. <laughs> he's doing something fidgety. Mm. The officer was well within his right, as well as acting reasonably, when he asked him to back up. That 21-foot rule, it, it, it's, it's appropriate. He said that was the training that they received um, in terms of the distance that allowed for someone who needs to, to do them harm. It's a threat as, um, assessment. Um, we don't know when the defendant approached whether he had a, a gun concealed, whether he had a knife um, concealed, whether he had other weapons. And you'll Redder than the Red Ranger? Somehow still not as problematic as Austin St. John, am I right, Power Rangers fans? Who do I need to catch up to speed on the Nazi Red Ranger? <laughs> Here, multiple times in the video, officer... So are we all in agreement that Austin St. John was probably bullying um, David Yost now? Because I'm getting the vibe that Austin was probably a big part of why Billy left. Stop reaching. Stop reaching. This is an unknown... The original Red Ranger is a fucking creep now, by the way. And it seems like he may have been... Potentially involved with the bullying that made uh, the original Blue Ranger leave the show. He's putting out a line of clothing with different warriors throughout history and their sayings. You know what warrior, quote unquote, he put on his clothing? Quotes from Hitler. Yeah. Not good. Captain Squid says, yeah, no bet on that one. I only throw my money away on bits. That's a good choice. Literally Hitler. Literally Hitler. He Godwin's lawed himself in his own clothing line. Like, it feels like, um... Remember when, um... Nathan from Nathan For You did the, um... <clears throat> Anti-Holocaust denial clothing line? <laughs> <laughs> reminds me a little bit of how outrageous that was kind of weird but the opposite it's even worse because it's pro hitler you know when defense counsel asked officer bork all of these questions about how it is that you do this and officer bork kept responding it depends on the situation it depends on the totality of the circumstances here was an officer acting alone individually engaged one-to-one -one with a driver um but he had no problem with you, have, you insert another individual who, who enters the scene um, in the manner that the defendant did. Um, and now this officer's um, attention is going to be divided. Oh, I know Will Kale. I'm sure even if Austin was in on it, he wasn't like the only one or even necessarily the main person. But I just find it hard to believe he wasn't involved. He had every reason to fear for his safety as well as, as that of the driver. I, again, if he had just complied with the officer's commands or demands to back up, and you know, a lot was made about, hey, he didn't have an opportunity to tell the, um, the defendant exactly how far back. As the officer testified, even just with the, hey, back up, the defendant didn't back up, not willingly. That's why the officer had to continue to engage with him and force him um, into, this, into the situation. Had he complied, he would not have been charged with obstruction. And Guys, I know the comply thing he as he a meme. This is literally a situation where he should have complied. <laughs> this is literally a situation where he should have. <laughs> Resisting. 
Officer Lewis, um, you are going to have to assess credibility. There's nothing in the video um, or, or Officer Gordon's testimony that would cause the court to question his veracity or his intention for that matter. Um, he was very honest in that he didn't believe the defendant wasn't trying to harm him necessarily with the squat. That's why the defendant was in charge with the battery on a, a, a protected person or a police officer. Um, but that SWAT, Your Honor, I would argue, was meant to resist. At that point in time, the officer was trying to detain him and subsequently arrest him on the, on the obstruction um, as depicted in the video. And so at this point, I think we proved by um, beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant did hinder um, Officer Board's investigation um, and detention of the, the Hyundai driver. Legally, he, I think that's a good way to put it. Legally, he should have. Cops have too much power, but this reasonable, especially considering how Chili presents himself. Right. It's a larger systemic issue that I recognize exists. Chili is hurting the discussion of the issue, not helping it, though. Does that help? He resisted. Um... That's how I feel about it. I agree that the adversarial relationship that exists within the minds of the police between themselves and the general populace is a problem. Chili's not solving it. He's making it worse. <laughs> um, the officers um, arrest and, um, or attempt to arrest him. And so we would ask that you find the defendant guilty of both. Uh, right. Thank you. Ben? Yes, Your Honor. Um, so first of all, you cannot obstruct an unlawful order. Um, I disagree with the state that this is not a First Amendment issue. Uh, the First Amendment in, in this context actually has two parts. There's the filming and the right to film within a, a reasonable distance. Um, the case law in all the federal circuits, Your Honor, it, there's no 21 feet um, rule that's been approved by any court of which I'm aware. Uh, that there is a 10 foot rule um, that seems to be the rule that is applied by most of the federal circuits in interpreting. In Arizona. In First Amendment. Um, I, I submitted a bench brief that, that kind of goes through that issue if the courts have a chance to review that. I don't have that. Okay. When did you submit it? Um, it was submitted yesterday, Your Honor. I mean, at this point, I would move to strike because it, it's untimely. Um, but I got it this morning when I walked into court. God. So the officer's testimony to that there's essentially this 21 foot distance where anybody can charge an officer and cause physical harm to an officer. If that is applied universally, Your Honor, it, it totally uh, diminishes and violates the First Amendment. That is, as the officer testified, a 21 foot radius that he can attempt to impose. I believe his testimony was anytime there's not an obstacle between a, a person and um, somebody that law enforcement is interacting with. And, and that's just not what the law requires, Your Honor. The First Amendment gives uh, their, their media, new media, old media, it gives uh, individuals the right to film government agents. There's um, no dispute that that's the requirement. And if the officer is applying this 21 foot uh, circumference to all law enforcement interactions, he's effectively eliminated the ability to film uh, law enforcement going about their, their duties. Um, the commands to not talk to the driver are also um, not, not based on any uh, actual legal justification. There's no right to privacy in, in public, um, whether you're engaged with law enforcement or not. There's uh, no requirement or no... He did say circumference, didn't he? Law. That, uh, I'm not going to harp on that. Citizens can't interact with drivers that are uh, interacting with law enforcement. Um, so what's, what's taken place here, Your Honor, is that this officer has taken it upon himself to essentially uh, act, act as the uh, le legislature um, and created these rules that have no basis in um, any law and, in fact, are contrary to the First Amendment. Um, Again, you can't obstruct an unlawful demand, so uh, there is no obstruction of justice so The basis here. of his entire case is, I think that the 21-foot thing is unconstitutional. Um, I don't think you're equipped to your honor, take that to the, the finish line, the sir. Video, um, uh, essentially what happened is he walked over to the front of the vehicle. There was some dispute about why he was being detained, that was discussed. Um, the case law in that area, Your Honor, is that 
uh, if it's an unlawful arrest, which it was in this case, because they're uh, essentially arresting him for uh, violating these unlawful orders that they're um, pronouncing, um, you, again, the case laws, you can passively resist an unlawful arrest, and that's all that occurred here, Doctor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Does anyone like Pepper Jack? I don't know. I don't. To me, ketchup is spicy, so I can't do anything even my Castro PC is the problem with. Here it comes. Sorry, I'm just munching on this cheese like nobody's business. It's a meme for a reason. I'm gonna get a zapper collar, and if I start eating the cheese again, chat has to zap me. Green time, not cheese time. All right. Age Baird says, I am not a lawyer, but I don't think courts at this level even argue constitutionality. My understanding is at this level, it's just whether or not he violated the law. It would be on appeal that he would challenge constitutionality. I don't know. The argument that your attorney makes is it completely fails to consider the safety of the officer and the safety of the driver. The officer doesn't know who you are, and the driver doesn't know who you are. And you don't have any right to interfere with that officer doing his investigation and deciding if he wants to issue a ticket to this driver. And you are also don't have any business approaching the driver. The driver didn't ask you for help. The driver didn't say, help, help, you know. You didn't see an altercation happening between the officer and this driver. Um, the officer didn't protest that you were filming. There's no problem with filming. You can film, it's fine, all right? But you did interfere with his investigation. You did interfere with his ability to do his job. You did put him in a position where he is concerned for his safety and the safety of the driver. So I believe the state's met their burden beyond reasonable doubt. I'm gonna find you guilty of obstructing a public officer and resisting a public officer. So I'd like to hear from the state and then your attorney for our sentencing. Your Honor, in terms of sentencing, I would ask um, the uh, defendant to enter and complete a, um, an impulse control class. I would ask that the court- Impulse control class. I hope he still has to do that in jail because I think that would be good for him. Lobby a $500 fine or the equivalent in community service. I would ask that the defendant be ordered to stay out of trouble um, for the pendency of the case. Um, and I would ask for a 90 day suspended sentence. The judge here. And then talk as to <laughs> Mr. Blast pointed this out to me. But when the prosecutor asks for a suspended sentence, the judge almost looks mad. <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? I am not giving him a suspended sentence. He's going to jail. <laughs> Gatsby, thanks for gifting a tier one sub to the orb lady. Yeah, she looks just done. She's done. She's done with chili. I don't blame her. Thanks, Gatsby cat. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Each count will be current. At this point, the judge knows Chili isn't going to do any of that shit. Oh, yeah. That's our request. Thank you. Your Honor, I'm asking the court to sentence the defendant to credit for time served for these offenses. Um, even if the court concludes, and, and the court did conclude that he didn't have the right to do what he did, um, I, I think the court can see that he sincerely believed uh, that, that he had the right to do so. Um, that, that's based on his past experiences and the, the training he's received in reference to the First Amendment. Um, I don't think there was any, any intent from the defendant to engage in any wrongdoing in this case, Your Honor. Um, and that being the case, especially because of the public policy interests at, at issue. So when you say he doesn't wish to engage in any wrongdoing, it seems to me from observing him in the video that he wants, 
he wants this. He wants to get arrested. He wants to get into an altercation with the police officers. He welcomes this. This helps his YouTube channel. He called the officers here in my courtroom to take pigs. He called me, and he's not his head up and down. I so apparently he hates every law enforcement officer. He gave a thumbs up. He's giving thumbs up at this. In the United States. All right. Please stand up, sir. Are you finished? Yep. That's, I think, when she was like, yep, I'm throwing the book at this fucking guy. Fuck him. Helps his YouTube channel. He called the officers here in my courtroom to take pigs. He called me, and he's not his head up and down. I so apparently he hates every law enforcement officer in the United States. All right. Please stand up, sir. Are you finished with your request for credit for time, sir? Um, I, I would just emphasize, Your Honor, that the defendant testified and he sincerely believes that he is providing a public service um, when he refused. He sat back down. And films. He believes he's providing a public service while being a nuisance, so you just gotta let him. Incidents. Um, I understand the court you may have a different view of that, but when we're talking about First Amendment public policy issues such as um, supervising uh, people involved in government, I, I think that is something the court can take into consideration, not to have a show effect on that. I'll spit on that, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. DeCastro, please stand. I hereby sentence you to 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count one, 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count two. That's six months. That's 180 days. To run consecutive for a total of 180 days in custody. Thank you. This part's great. When he's he's confused, he's so confused. He's like, "Wait, suspend? You mean suspended? No, it starts today." 180 days in custody. Thank you. Suspended or? Oh no, it's gonna start right now. <laughs> Do not collect two hundred dollars. This is a travesty of justice. I'm gonna go to jail for half a year. Yep. How long is that? I can't understand what he's saying here. Bubble Homestead says, and lo, the fabled find out. I'll your stuff. The ju I'm sorry, the judge's picture in the bottom left hand corner still as this is happening is cracking me up. <laughs> She's just there. <laughs> just her smiling face. Get a hold of my assistant? You have an assistant? <laughs> And there he goes. And there's some furry art. There you go. <laughs> that was lovely. So Chili's going to be away for a while. Going to be about half a year without Chili. That'll be what it is. So there you go. <clears throat> okay. What are we going to watch next? Because we have plenty of time and plenty of videos. Ugh. What's your name? I'm here representing Brian Moscow. Do, do I not have an assistant? No, I don't. You think I, I can't even, you think I can pay for an assistant? No. <laughs> You're Brian Musgrove? I'm here to represent Celebration bits for the sentence. Thank you. I have no idea what that means. So why don't you come up to the podium? I tried to. Nope. Yes, yeah, stand in front of the thing. So, what is your name? Brian Joseph Musgrove. Okay. Are you an attorney? What's your P number? 
I'm not an attorney. So then you can't represent Brian Musgrove. So I'm you a, are a defendant, correct? I'm an ex executor on that, on that estate. Okay, so none of that is valid or legal. So you have an attorney. Wow, and she's just on this quick, huh? Well, none of that is valid or legal. So let's do the real trial. Attorney? He's not doing nothing for me. Okay, that wasn't my question. Do you have an attorney, yes or no? I have. Can Chat be my assistant? How's that going to work? I, yeah, he was supposed to be representing me, but... So you have Michael Dagger Margosian. Uh, okay, so he's your attorney. Okay, so go have a seat. When Mr. Dagger Margosian gets here, I'll call your case, okay? <laughs> Podium, please. Defeated. This is in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Brian Joseph Musgrove. File number 23-21461FH. And now I don't have anything of Tate. Although, hopefully he will be found guilty. That'd be nice. I have Isaac Sneed appearing on behalf of the people. And I have Michael Daggermark. So disappointed none of you zapped me for the cheese. Zian appearing on behalf of Mr. Musgrove. Um, Mr. Daggermark goes in Mike. Oh, there he is. So, um, Mr. Daggermark goes in. This is a date and time set for... Pre-trial in this matter, Mr. Musgrove said that he was appearing on his own behalf. I did verify he is not an attorney, and you are still the attorney of record. So, um, Mr. Dagger Margosian, how do you wish to proceed? Well, Your Honor, I I am aware that Mr. Musgrove uh, wants to present information to the court. I'm happy to be standby counsel if he wants to represent himself obviously this court would have to go through the colloquy of that but um, obviously it's mr musgrove's uh legal right to at, at least ask the court to do that so i'm i'm here to observe at this point all right so mr musgrove when you were at the bench be or up at the podium before you fake first jailhouse call from Chile. michael what the everlasting god blessed fucking oh it's someone doing like a fake thing Right? I'm assuming. The fuck was that today in court? Oh, yeah. AI. You were supposed to be my standby fucking lawyer, remember? We practiced that. You were going to pretend to have laryngitis if Judge Megabitch denied my motion to represent myself. Don't tell me how to practice law, me. I'm an autodidactic constitutional law scholar with occasional testicle difficulties. But thanks to you, you lower than a scum strip club. Ah, uh, the AI. I can't get past the AI. The voice is so stilted. <sighs> you said that you were appearing on behalf of yourself. So, Mr. Musgrove, um, are you asking to no longer have counsel represent you? Um, well, uh, what, the, what, what I'm understanding is that the courts is a private for profit. So, Mr. Musgrove, I know where you're going with this, and none of that is valid. Uh, none uh, of that is I, law. I'm, I'm not the all cap name. The court none not of that is valid. None of that is law. You are person. standing in my courtroom. I have jurisdiction over you. So, I tried to file paperwork with the clerk's office ahead of time so that you would have time to review it, and they denied me. I know what you're talking about. None of that is valid under the law of the state of Michigan or the Constitution of the United States of America. What do you mean it is? No. The Supreme Court says it is. What does it say it is? The Supreme Court says that if you, if we were at the age of 18, we were supposed to take, uh, claim our, mi our minor status. Nope, not valid. Okay. So. <laughs> I appreciate her glibness. Here's what I would say to you. Mr. Dagger Markosian is like most of our public defenders, exceptional attorneys and very well versed in the law and very experienced. He gives legal advice. You may not like the legal advice, but it's usually good advice. I've never had anyone from the public defender's office um, not wholeheartedly try to represent their clients. So what you are talking about is not valid 
and it is not going to get you out of this case. You're not going to be able to say all those things because it's not valid. Everyone in this involved in this court case is has a financial interest in the case. It's, what is I don't have a financial interest in your case. Do I get paid by the state of Michigan whether you plead, whether it gets dismissed? I don't make any money off you. It's a good answer. So we have budgets. The court system is not a profit generating revenue. We are here to represent people so that people who are charged with crimes are protected people who are victims of crime that's one thing that i do find incredibly funny about people who claim that like the federal government is secretly a for-profit corporation it would be the worst for-profit corporation in the history of corporations you know how much fucking money like that's just not it's not what it's set up for it's not there to generate revenue it's there to provide services and infrastructure and to organize things Courts don't make money. They cost money. It costs so much money to run the judicial system. But you need one to have a society as big as ours run. Ugh. Crimes are protected, and that's why we have but all In these. order for there to be a crime, there has to be a victim. There is, a, there is no... Well, there is a victim the, in this case. The, the victim would be the company. You the company. are charged. I can't face Ashley, the Actually, just hold on. So your crime that you are charged with, which you are innocent as of this time, let me grab the right file, is failure. Oh, this is an a, let me see. This is an embezzlement charge. So you are charged- Oh shit, I forgot, I did, I saw this one. I don't know if I showed it to you guys, but this guy, it's not even just a traffic thing. This guy embezzled over $50,000 from his company in like equipment from a construction company. Because his charge is embezzlement between fifty but not over a hundred thousand dollars, so he like stole a bunch of construction equipment and then sold it that wasn't his, which is conversion, which is a crime. <laughs> there is a victim. I think he actually tries that, and she explains like, no, the victim is the business owners of the business you stole over fifty thousand dollars from. <laughs> Embezzlement, 50000 or more, but less than 100000 That being an agent, servant, or employee of Hardwoods of Michigan Industries did convert to your own use without the consent of your employer or principal, industrial tools and equipment in the amount of $68,938. 68000 Wow. And 40 cents or money or equipment. And that's a 15-year felony. So if you are found guilty by a jury, you can go to prison for up to 15 years. You're charged in count two with using a computer to commit a crime to facilitate the charge in count one. That carries a maximum penalty of up to 10 years in prison. And the way that- I thought that was fencing stolen property. It's embezzlement because of conversion. Like if he had broken into a place and stolen it and then- then caught that would be fencing stolen property but because he works at the company and was entitled to have access to the equipment but then took it and sold it for his own purposes that's conversion and that's the element that makes it um embezzlement instead of just theft because he had access legally to the equipment it's just that he then converted it from the property of the business to his own by selling it and taking the money without permission the statue set up, I can actually stack those possibly. So you potentially could be looking at up to 25 years in prison. So the victim that's up to 25 years in prison, shit, not worth it. In this would be that business. Right. And I can't face that accuser because that business can't get on the stand for me to ask questions. And a third party. But their representative can. can. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Yes, they okay. can. So I have 189000 of student loan debt that was forgiven to be a lawyer. You do not. And Mr. Dagmar goes in, Mr. Isaac Sneed, all of the attorneys here went to law school to know the law, and their job is to advise you of the law. So, yeah, yes, they can. Going, yes, you can't by, be charged. Everything, all you the can't. laws and statutes that you guys go by are, are legal. For corporations. They're for fixed. Still a crime. Still a crime. But I'm not Still a, a crime. corporation. I'm a living person. Yep, and that's why you're standing in front of me. If you were dead, the case would be dismissed. Yeah, the, the all cap name is that. That means nothing. That's not valid. Oh, okay. It's not legal. Right. So do you want to represent yourself or do you want to have an attorney to represent you? 
please get an attorney. I, I need some time to think. Okay. So I'm going to set this for another pretrial on March 20th at 830 in the morning. And Ms. Adams, could I get a notice of hearing for Mr. Musgrove? Yes, Judge. Cool motive, still crime. Oh, so that's fun. Um, what's next? <clears throat> Oh, this is weird. So, these are some sovereign citizens. There's some news reports that are going to be following up on this that are pretty interesting. Fake diplomatic plates. Put fake diplomatic license plates on her car, which you don't want to do. Got arrested, resisted arrest. You'll see. Um, and then in the aftermath, she got out of jail after her arraignment and posting bond. And her boyfriend showed up to the jail to pick her up with the same plates on his car. And you can probably guess what happened then. So let's watch all of this and, um, I don't know, learn the definition of insanity, I guess. Please bring your supervisor now. You're reaching inside our vehicle. I That's feel right. threatened. I am. You're, You're reaching, reaching inside our vehicle. vehicle. I feel threatened. I feel threatened. I feel threatened. Yo, yo, right now. Stop right now. Stop right now. Stop right now. Get off of her right now. Oh, your job is done. Get, the, get off of her. Get off of her right now. It's okay. I have a fee schedule. Get off of her right. Um, let her go. If you didn't hear, she said, it's okay. I have a fee schedule. A fee schedule is when they think they can charge the police and say, well, you're wasting my time, copper, so you owe me $100,000 in gold doubloons, or whatever they think the real currency is. A chili short. A man. Men are stronger than women. We're not equal. Men need women. Women need men. We have an innie and we have an outie. They connect. Well, all right then, Chili. We connect with each other. We need each other. We're not equal. I wish I had an any. Let her go right now. It's okay. I have a fee schedule. Arrest. I have a fee schedule. It's okay. Ma I have a fee schedule. Ma'am, ma'am. What am I going to do? Follow what I'm saying. Step what? out of the they car. They have I'm no jurisdiction over you. She is not a United States citizen. Yeah. They have no the jurisdiction. Yes, you have... She is a United States citizen, by the way. She was born in New York. You are going to get fired. It's one of those things where they're trying to claim they're not a citizen because they think being a citizen gives the police power over you, when in reality, if you're not a citizen, you're more likely to be treated poorly by the police. It's not going to shield you. Your job and she's going to Black Saw Dictionary request. What did you want me to look up? I apologize. I missed that earlier. Dillis Filler. Let's see what you wanted me to look up. Insanity. Okay. I will see you in court. I will see you in court. I will see you in court. Hey, if you want to play, guess what? I'll see you in court. I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear to God. Oh, you are. Sensei, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you had to go through this. I'm so sorry, Sensei. Maybe don't give her bad advice. I see. I promise you I will get you out of court. I will get you out. All you had to do was comply. I did. I gave no, him my passport. No, you did not. No, you did not. I gave him my passport, sir. That is not a driver's license. Sir, you can look me up in the system and you'll find me. Please bring your supervisor now. Let's see. Insanity. Um, the term in a social and legal term rather than a medical one and indicates condition which renders the afflicted person unfit to enjoy liberty of action because of the unreliability of his behavior with con... with con... wait. Oh, with concomitant danger to himself and others. The term is more or less synonymous with the mental illness or psychosis in law. The term is used to denote the degree of mental illness to which negates the uh, individual's legal responsibility or capacity. Surprised it wasn't just a picture of Voss. Sorry, that's quiet. 
Also this noon, traffic stopped trouble. A woman pulled out of a car and arrested. Police say she thought she had a get out of jail free card, but they say that was a fake. Seven's Alex Browning is live in Sunny Isles Beach with why she was arrested. Alex. And Alex, this driver apparently was trying to claim that she was a sovereign citizen and refused to provide a valid driver's license to responding officers. Yeah, they would that's eventually right. let her go with a ticket once they saw that she actually did have one. Florida and Michigan, I'm telling you, it's the peninsulas. It was once they determined that license plate, that diplomatic license plate was a fraud, they came back and arrested her. Hey, legendary vegan, how's it going? A Tuesday drive taking a turn. Cecilia Mercado forcibly removed from her car by Sunny Isles cops during a traffic stop. I feel threatened. Yo, yo, right now. Stop right Sorry, I forgot I turned it down so much. That must have been quite quiet for you. I apologize. Isles cops during a traffic stop. I feel threatened. Yo, yo, right now. Stop right now. Stop right now. Stop right now. Stop right now. Passenger irate. I will say out of the peninsulas in the United States, we're the better one. Coming out officers. Step out of the they car. Have no jurisdiction over you. She is not a United States citizen. They have no the jurisdiction. You have. You are going to and get fired from your job, and she's going to get two hundred fifty thousand dollars for running up out of the car. I I Again, they just think they're going to tell them you owe me two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and that's going to work. That's not how anything works. Also, how a lot of sovereign citizens end up in jail for filing false liens. Captain Squid says Michigan also has Fago, so that tracks. Whoop, whoop. I will see you in court. I, I will see you in court. Hey, if you want to play, guess what? I'll see you in court. As she's for those who don't know, Fago, uh, the 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 soda brand, is from Michigan. It is often associated with Juggalos. Placed in but in Michigan, it's just a thing. It's all over the place, so <laughs> it's just normal. Huffs after refusing to comply. I'm so sorry. Her claims of diplomatic immunity would end with her spending a night at county lockup. Mercado now facing a felony. Her passenger saying this. Her immunity is 100% authentic. Is she related? Her immunity is authentic. He says it. Therefore, it's true. Somebody of stature in a different country? Um, the specifics can't be disclosed on a public interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely legit, though. We can't tell you in public why she has diplomatic immunity, but trust me. However, uh, the court case and the federal lawsuit will be publicly. Sunday Isles police tell us the female driver shown in the video was stopped by our officers for traffic violations. She then stated she had immunity. She repeatedly refused to comply with officers' orders and was placed in handcuffs. It turns out her diplomatic plate was fake. Yeah, well her... you're telling me it wasn't real? You can't just buy them on the internet? Community claim. Nothing should get to the point where somebody is dragging somebody out of a vehicle for a wrong left turn. She wasn't dragged out for a wrong left turn. She was dragged out because you guys were refusing to identify yourselves. Anyway, here's the next video where he comes back to pick her up from jail after her arraignment, and he gets arrested for having the same fake plates on his car. <laughs> I announced the latest on this viral video showing the rough arrest of a woman during a traffic stop in Sunny Isles Beach. Officers are seen dragging her out of her car and placing her in handcuffs. And just hours after she was released from jail, police moved in to make another arrest. And Local 10 News was the one and only station there as it happened. We have live team coverage. Local 10's Rosh Lowe was there for the second arrest. But we begin with crime specialist Bridget Matter with why this all has to do with fake diplomatic tags. Bridget. So we spoke to this woman as she was getting out of jail. She says that her rights were violated. She also claims that she's not an American citizen and has immunity, but police say she was driving around with fake diplomatic plates. I feel threatened. I feel threatened. This video quickly circ saying you feel threatened only works for cops. Doesn't work for you. Circulated on social media showing a woman pulled out of a car by police, her boyfriend recording from the passenger seat. 
Officers say the driver, 32-year-old Cecilia Mercado, gave the officer a passport instead of a license, which prompted police to remove her from the car. All you had to do was comply. I did. I gave no, him my passport. No, you did not. No, you did not. I gave him my passport, sir. That is not a driver's license. So you Sunny Isles Beach police say she was driving a car with a counterfeit diplomatic license plate. There it is. If you see one with UCC, that's how you know you're fucked. Hey, buddy. Looks like Oliver was bad and is in timeout now. Her boyfriend says this amid the chaos. Step out of the car. No jurisdiction. Excuse me. She is not a United States citizen. We asked Mercado about her citizenship status when she bonded out of jail. I'm a United States national. Were you so, born in the Bronx? I was born in the Bronx, New York. So are you? Fun fact: If you were born in the United States, you are a citizen of the United States unless you go through the process to actually renounce your citizenship. Which you cannot just say, I renounce my citizenship. There's an actual process. People who are sovereign citizens, for whatever reason, sometimes believe that by claiming they're not citizens, then the state has no authority over them. They are incorrect. Marcus Drake says, misidentifying the crime is weirdly common. I had a client who went to prison for being a sex offender living with a child in breach of his probation terms. He was convicted convinced the judge um gave him so much time because he tested positive for cocaine i mean it's possible i don't know I'm did you denounce national. your citizenship no i did not so are you i'm an american state national mercado no you're not is a latin music yes we have birthright citizenship american state nationals are a thing but only if you're born within particular um protectorates of the united states like is it guam I forget which one it is. It's one of the one of the things that the United States owns, but is not a state. Artist known as Ceci. She would not say how she has diplomatic status, but police say those diplomatic plates. Maybe oh, American Samoa, American Samoa. Hmm. Hi, buddy. What are you doing? Being weird. You want to be on camera? You want everyone to see you? Come on, buddy. Come on. Yeah. Orange. States are fake. They are not fake. They are completely registered to my Puerto Rico and Guam are both full citizenship. Okay. Must just be American Samoa then. The trust and my vehicle, which by law you are allowed to have a vehicle on Geneva Trust. Her boyfriend and a driver picked her up from jail in this luxury Maybach with another diplomatic plate of its own. The two, along with the driver, were pulled over coming home from jail. Stop resisting, man. Stop resisting. So the driver of that car was arrested. Police say for not having a valid driver's license. They also took several guns out of the car and they impounded that car for evidence. Next at six, we'll show you what's next for the three. I didn't realize there were guns in the car, too. Uh, I wonder if they were legally registered. Considering how sovereign citizens feel about registering things with the government, I have a feeling those guns probably are not owned legally. For now, we're live in Sunny Isles Beach. Bridget Matter, Local 10 News. Okay, Bridget, thanks a lot. And Local 10's Rosh Lowe was just feet away when police made that second arrest. And Rosh continues on live team coverage now from Sunny Isles Beach. Hey, Rosh. All right, Calvin and everyone. Now we are going to bring you into this takedown, and all I can say is, wow, let judge? me paint the picture. I pull up, police pull up, all of a sudden guns are drawn, and cops are saying, get out of the car, get out of the car. Tense moments, and here it is. We are there as Sunny Isles Beach police pull over this Maybach. <laughs> Look at the fucking! I know someone said that this is this is his Instagram on the back. <laughs> no offense, but what asshole does this? You put your fucking Instagram handle on there? Oh my god! Frizzle fries. Thanks for following. Love the name. Side Cecilia Mercado, her boyfriend, and a driver. Tense moments here as no one will open the car. Stay back. Stay back. Why did they let them take the fake tags? They didn't. This is a second car. The first car was a different car. They had two cars with this on the license plates. <laughs> this is the second car. 
and this lasts for several seconds. Police continually give orders to get out of the car. Yo, open the Sunny Isles Beach police originally arrested Mercado for driving a car with a fake diplomatic license plate, they say. The video of her refusing to get out of the car went viral, and cops say this Maybach, which picked her up from jail, also has a phony diplomatic tag, and they say the car isn't registered. Finally, cops have to break the window, and here's the takedown. So here's the driver of the car being taken away. Mercado and her boyfriend were released, and Mercado had this to say. They had guns to the car. I just got out of jail. This is not funny. This is this is, this is messed up. Well, they say it's not registered, the plates, and that the plate was a it's fraudulent not plate. It's not fraudulent plates. It's a lie. DOT plates. It is a lie. There's DOT, nothing Department of Correct. Department of State. The car is registered to the Department of State. There goes the tag. I promise you it's not. Back to the Maybach and the Maybach being towed. When was this? this? Last week? Evolves. Or earlier this week, six days ago, roughly? And let me tell you, there were some tense moments that I mentioned here at the very beginning. We're standing there. They wouldn't get out of the car. Finally, they do get out of the car. And as Cecilia said, that the tags are registered to the DOT and then to the State Department. Well, police say... None of that is true. In fact, they tell me this entire investigation is ongoing. We'll stay on top of it. For now, I'm live in Sunny Isles Beach, Rosh Lowe, Local 10 News. No offense, but that reporter kind of sounded like he was like on Ambien or something. <laughs> he sounded very... He just didn't have a lot of feeling about what was happening. Hope he's doing okay. <sighs> video of his arrest being filmed by the girlfriend. Ooh, the cops were angry, so this is probably not gonna be fun. Look at this fucking car! <laughs> Look at this shit! Oh my god, he's like a rich Instagram asshole. Of course. Do not roll the windows down, only roll the one. Roll the oh. one. Record everything. Record everything, lock the car. The fucking LED strips in the car. Just... Put the window down a little bit, babe. Yeah. Put it down. Only one. They're holding guns right now. Open the back. Put your window down. Bro, do not open the, the, do not open the window. Open the door. Why open are you doing door. this? Why are you doing yeah, this? Do not open the door. Open Why the are you... Come back, buddy. I was trying to give you a toy. Come on. Come lay down. doing this hey, open the door yo open the door yo open the fucking door why are you doing what this what is your emergency yo, open the fucking door officer get the fuck out get the fuck out oh my god look at the cop holding his gun like this <laughs> are you fucking kidding me man i swear half the cops think they're playing gta Fenikagami says, I wonder if it's ever occurred to Savsits uh, to try claiming they're gay to get out of charges. After all, we all know the meme. Hey, it says be gay, do crime. It doesn't say you're immune. Get the fuck out. Stop the Put car. Put the fucking car apart. Put the car Andre, apart. Andre, stop. Put the car apart. Stop. Stop. <laughs> what is this, like, extra fucking, like, <laughs> reflex sight on the gun, too? Oh, my God. Uh, everyone's a douchebag in this video. Love that for us. Get the fuck out. Get what out of the car. Get out of the car. Don't fucking move. Don't fucking move. What is Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Let's go. Get out of the car. What is going on? Get out of the car. Everybody out of the car. What is going on? Everybody out. What is... Ah, uh, genius. All right. Let's move on. This is pretty interesting. This was uploaded earlier today, and I actually commented on it. Looks like they responded again. Uh, but let's take a look. The other day, I was scrolling through the vast and hellish depths of Reddit, and I came upon a post on the subreddit, mildly, mildly infuriating. And this post pertained to somebody who had a uh, plate on the back of their car which read private not for commercial use. Basically, it was somebody who hadn't registered their car who um, fights the right to travel battle. It's not a fight. 
It's just illegal. That would be like me robbing a bank and saying I'm fighting the fiat currency system. Like, you can try and define your way out of it however you want. You're, you're breaking the law. Um, instead of, you know, you're not, you're not driving, you're traveling. Driving implies... <laughs> you didn't miss the, the mortgage lady. I have her pulled up. We haven't watched her yet. Commercial capacity. Traveling implies moving personal property from one place Again, to Again, this guy's another sovereign citizen. He believes the bullshit internet stuff where he thinks that traveling is somehow legally distinct from driving in a vehicle. It's not. A car is a car. An automobile is a car. You are operating it. You're driving. Another. Now, I think those plates are a little silly. Okay, if you, you're gonna go, go with. I think you're afraid. Hold on. And so right off the bat, we've got. You get to. Sorry, I wanted to see what he said to me back. Oh, okay. He didn't. Never mind. Try your hand with the cops, and good for them. Okay, if you, you're gonna go, go without registering your car. Criminal music fish. Thanks just for following. Just off. I mean, you're only attracting more attention by putting something like that on. Uh, and I, I know that that's part of, part of the, uh, the allure of do doing so, is that. You get to try your hand with the cops, and... The phrase, try your hand with the cops, is wild to me. I can't imagine having such little fear of the police that you want to quote-unquote try your hand with the police. I don't want to talk to a cop ever if I don't have to. They're scary. So no thank you. What a strange mentality. You want to pick fights with cops? Stupid. Good for them. Yeah, bunny. But um, what really struck me were the replies. Hydrate. These, everybody on Reddit labeled this person, seemingly wrongfully so, as a, uh, what do they call him, a, a sovereign citizen. Nope, so, that's the correct nomenclature. Sovereign citizens get mad when you call them sovereign citizens because they're like, that's an oxymoron. Yes, that's the point. That phrase was actually coined by the original sovereign citizens. We just picked it up. But the fact that the word is an oxymoron is kind of part of the point and why it fits so well, because the belief system is nonsense. The belief system is paradoxical. So it makes sense for the title of that belief to be an oxymoron. I'm going to dwell on that for a minute. Sovereign citizen. That right off the bat is the the same type of thing as calling somebody a conspiracy theorist people are conspiracy theorists often do you think that that's not a valid criticism of people who are obsessed with conspiracy theories sovereign citizens do not exist if they do they are the police um however you cannot be simultaneously sovereign and a denizen of a city it's correct that's what we're saying those are two mutually exclusive ways of being. Denizen. Um, and so right off the bat, we've got we've got disinformation, um, misinformation, I guess, because people are largely uneducated about it. But what really, really, really struck me was how much vitriol exists for people who challenge authority. No, I think a lot of people like challenging authority. It's the basis of a ton of the storytelling we do. People in the United States, if anything, have a propensity for believing they're fighting authority that's unjust even when it isn't. We love an underdog story. What we don't like is people being petulant children and unilaterally deciding they don't want to have a driver's license. You don't get to do that. Most people disagree with you. I get that that's not fun for you. It's not fun when people don't agree with you, but that's what it is. So you just need to live with that. I don't understand it. Most of the people on that site come from a nation which they probably claim is a free country. I'd say... I tend not to use vacuous, jingoistic statements. So not really, but okay. Everybody that's on that site thinks that their respective country is a free country. And the United what does that States. mean? What do you think that means? 
Every country has different rules, and some are more prohibitive than others. That's for sure, but like, what do you mean free country? We, we profess ourselves as the freest of all countries. And yet, when somebody dares to stand up to authority, so when somebody dares to stand up to... You misunderstand. People are happy when people stand up to unjust authority, but like, if you stand up to like, no running around the pool, like you're just kind of an asshole. You know what I mean? It's one thing to be the kid in class that stands up to a teacher who's overexerting their power, which is what you think you're doing, when in reality, you're more like the kid who interrupts every lesson because you think you're really funny, or because you just don't like the teacher, and you think everyone loves you, but in reality, they just got annoyed with you after day two, right? It's not funny just to butt up against any authority, because realistically, in life, there's reasons that certain people have authority over certain subsets of interests or things. We delegate tasks in society. So just arbitrarily being mad at people who have authority in specific situations, even when that authority isn't being abused, just makes you look like an asshole. Licensing a right. They're derived. You don't have a right to drive a car. And belittled. It doesn't. On public roadways. Private property. You can drive your car wherever you want. But the second the wheels touch the public roadways, you need all the licenses and stuff. Doesn't make any sense. You people have no freedom in your heart. You are slaves. And you are slave minded. And I think this is really just pathetic. I understand that, she, that you are too weak and too afraid to go against the status quo and that's fine that's interesting that he thinks that anyone who disagrees with him is inherently afraid that's unhealthy we need good sheep like you the world sheeple he said it world needs people like you so that you know people can sell reality shows and stuff like that he's better than you sheeple okay he doesn't follow the rules he wears his hat backwards and hates reality television, okay? He hasn't had a girlfriend since seventh grade. He doesn't need society. I mean, who else is gonna watch him if not for me? <laughs> Schmucks hey, like you. Oliver, are you a sovereign citizen? Do the laws apply to you? Yeah. Yeah, you choose not to contract. Ah! I don't stand under your authority. <laughs> but Nikigami says increasingly freedom and rights have um, become dog whistles for freedom and right to be an asshole. Right? But I, I, I don't get it. There should not be such vitriol. You know. Oliver's a he. He's our boy cat. The, the problem arises when these same people likely think that 1776 was a blessing to our country and that's a historical event i don't know if i'm getting that into a historical event like that and then go shame modern people for doing the same type of thing now not wanting to get insurance for your car isn't the same thing as having philosophical disagreements with the concept of a monarchy based on like blood rule not even the same type of thing 1776 the revolutionary war was insanely bloody and traveling i'll use that guy's terminology traveling without a license is completely victim furry potato the frauditor was found guilty on two felonies for an in incident outside of a synagogue where the frauditor caused so much mayhem that the guard shot her in the leg sentencing in one week possibly six years maximum oh shit that's nuts you know what I think it is? I think you're afraid. I think you're afraid to to stand up for yourself, and I think because of that, you are intimidated by those who have the courage to do so. And because of that, you have to put them down. You do have the courage to wear those sunglasses in public, which is pretty impressive. Chiba Hawk says, worth the clip. What is this? Oliver, are you a sovereign citizen?
Do the laws apply to you? Yeah. Yeah, you two snuck a contract. Ah! <laughs> He's a nuisance. But what you don't realize is that you are Nazis. There's no difference between you and a Nazi sympathizer or... Did you know that the Nazis were bad for insurance requirements? Oh, hey, buddy. You know, Nazi you... Oliver knows his rights. He has all the rights. There's not a single bit of difference. You people are just as brainwashed and just as dangerous as anybody who saluted Hitler. That's if you believe the official story, which I suggest you look into. Oh, um, shit. Hold on. In a Nazi sympathizer or, you know, Nazi youth, there's not a single bit of difference. You people are just as brainwashed and just as dangerous as anybody who saluted Hitler. That's if you believe the official story, which I suggest you look into. Um... So he is both comparing his enemies to Nazis while also being presumably a Holocaust denier. That doesn't make a lot of sense rhetorically. It's a bit confused. And depressing. H. Baird says maybe he just, just maybe he thinks saluting is a conspiracy. Captain Squid says Hitler was bad, but also Hitler wasn't that bad. How does this guy avoid drowning when he looks up? As soon as possible. It's fascinating. But he recognizes Nazi as a rhetorical tool, but doesn't agree with the reasons the rhetorical tool exists. Shame on you people. Shame on you people. If somebody chooses to put themselves at risk, what do you think they gain from it? Do you think, do you think they're doing it for themselves? Do you think the guy- Yes, the whole thing is, whether they realize it or not, the sovereign citizen thing is often, like a lot of conspiracy theories, a defense mechanism that one employs in order to stop one from having to accept reality as it exists. You fill in reality that you don't like with false narrative that is comforting to you, so it is a pretty selfish thing to do. Now, people aren't necessarily doing this consciously. People fall into these things all the time, whether it's cults or conspiracies or whatever. But that's what's happening. Their personal mental interest in maintaining a certain worldview ends up taking precedence over everything else, including reality. That's how stuff like this happens. Hi. Harold Elbelman, thanks for a 30 stream streak, says I just woke up from a nap and I want to go back to bed. <laughs> go back to bed. You're good. With no license plate, just says, oh, you know, this is going to be really good for my day. No, it's principles, something that none of you have. All you folks have are orders, and you follow them. You know, it doesn't matter if your orders are to harm somebody or if your orders are illogical. You follow the dictates of politicians, and I can't think of a more pathetic way to be. You follow so closely the dictates of people who hate you that you, in turn, hate people who stand up. Sir, you're doing Nazi Hitler apologia. I cannot imagine a world in which you want my rights to be protected. Against those politicians. I don't think you, le you understand the level of just mental and emotional degradation that you have gone through in order to have an outlook like that. You should be thanking everybody who stands up for your rights. Even if you think that license plates are, for some reason, you know, let's say you think that they're really important. Yeah. They're required. They're not just important. They are important, but they are also a requirement. Man, I can't imagine anybody driving with a lot. Who cares? Who Most people do. You lose. Fennekagami says, I want us to have a free country. Here's the thing. To be human means to have freedom to restrict your own freedom for the benefit of yourself and others. This is how we survive in the world in the overwhelming presence of reality with rules in society. Yeah. There's always a back and forth. Your freedoms have the potential to encroach on the freedoms of others. So within society, we set up rules 
that we try, not perfectly, often in not great ways, but systems that try to balance people's freedoms against each other's, people's rights against the rights of others. And it's a difficult thing. It's not an objective thing. We don't always get it right. We often get it wrong. But when we do get it wrong, it takes concerted effort to change the system, not just you as an individual thinking you are exempt from the rules. Who cares? Do you, boo? <laughs> get your license plate. I can release the orange. He's been here long enough. He's been institutionalized. Yeah. That's an institutionalized boy. It's time to let you free to Zewatenejo. Or you will build a boat. Or something. Alright. <sighs> Bye, buddy. Tell Morgan Freeman I said hi, or whatever other movie reference I was making. <sighs> Pay your your two hundred and fifty dollars a year to use the property which you rightfully own. It's not to use the property that you rightfully own. It's to use the public roadways, which you are paying for with the taxes. Glad we could let you know how that's working. You know, get permission. You're not paying for permission to use your car. You're paying for permission to use the roads. From a state that hates you to do an activity. Of, for which you have a right. I, I mean... You don't have a right to travel via car on public roadways. But don't expect others to do the same. What percentage of the movies do I own have I seen? About 75%. I do a certain... Not intentionally, just I buy a certain amount of blind buys if they're, like, on sale. I keep track of sales and stuff. I haven't bought stuff in quite a while just because money's been really tight. Um, but you guys have sent me some stuff. Um, but I would say a good three quarters. The rest I'm working my way through as I go. If I see stuff that I know is good or weird or there's like a good sale, I pick it up. That's the thing. You expect everybody to fall in line like good little fucking Nazis. Not everybody think, likes to do that, you, you know? Do you think that Nazis are the only country in the history of the world? Like Nazi Germany is the only country that's had rules? <laughs> no. Some people actually have courage in their heart and freedom. Do I think there have ever been any trans sob citizens? There's at least one that I found, but I chose not to cover her because she seemed also maybe like other stuff was going on and it just felt bad covering her. So there's at least been one that I'm aware of. Freedom in their heart and um, are willing to put themselves at risk to attain that freedom, not necessarily for themselves, but for their children, your children, my children for the future so that so that the next few generations don't suffer even the the consequences of your cowardice and that's really what it is you have but a snapshot and because you've always lived in that snapshot you you say this is free having having to get a driver's license to to use roads which i have a right to use that you don't have a right to use the roads not with a car, unless you have a license. Unconditional prong. Thanks for 22 months. Says saving money, too, but we're closing on the first house. Blu-rays with more noise. Oh, hell. That's nice. Congrats on closing on the house. That is That's exciting. freedom. That's the American way. But is it? Or is that just what you're used to? Because that's really what it is. You are just used to having to pay that tax. And because you're used to it, you can't understand anybody who doesn't again pathetic pathetic sorry i equalize i only have one headphone and i didn't realize it was so weird i equalized it i don't know the one I true fish boy how's it going your heads out of your asses um i think any men who try and deride somebody for standing up against power I think you need to reevaluate your masculinity. Um, what about non men? How about me? That means I can make fun of you, right? I don't think you wear it very well. 
Um, Saint Sanguine with a hundred bits says, so what does Sobsits think commercial driver's licenses are for? I don't know. I don't know if I've seen any of them be directly asked that question. And I hope you learn before it's too late, because here's what happened. That's actually why I transitioned, so I could criticize sovereign citizens. You start out with ultimate freedom, and little by little, you let politicians whittle it away. And it, it happens uh, in ways such as, you know, first, you have to register your car. Then you got to get a license to, to use your car. You should have both of those. I mean, I guess you should have the registration first, but, like, doesn't really make sense to get a car if you can't drive it legally. And, uh, then you got to pay tolls on the road to use the toll roads. And do you see, like... That's not a state issue. That's a private issue. Toll roads are privately owned, generally. They get contracted out and paid for by the toll. Little by little... Hi, Dre! Your, your rights get get stripped away from you and the pathetic part is you stand up moss law thank you for four months says whoop whoop and it kicks off a hype train for that you stand up for them being taken um you are no countryman of mine i guarantee you when push comes to shove we will be on opposite sides of a bear oh he's calling for like a civil war over his <laughs> inability to grasp why a driver's license and insurance are good Great. Because, and I mean a rain barrel, okay, YouTube. You know, I love rain barrels. I think it's wonderful to collect your own rainwater. But, you people probably think that it's illegal to collect rainwater, and you stand up for that law. And you and I will be on opposite ends of the, that rain barrel. Do better. Do better for yourself, for your children, and for the f Goddamn Nemesaur, look at you. 20 tier 1 subs blowing up in chat. Thank you, Nemesaur, for all you do for this chat, for all you do for this channel. Keeping people from having to look at ads. Which is the greatest gift of all, frankly. It's more me. Thank you. Sincerely, Nemesaur. I appreciate you. St. Sanguine with 100 bits says choo choo, 92% to level 4. Future of this country, because this is not having. Nemesaur in a Giga Chad, true! In a good way. I would much rather have half a million people driving without a license than 30 whatever million, 30, 33 million following all the rules. Just in a heartbeat. I would much does he think there's only 33 million people in the country? I'd rather have that. He must have misspoke, because that's close. It's like 330, right? 330 million, roughly? I would take dangerous freedom... Aliyah, thanks for gifting us up. ...over safe tyranny any day of the week, and I... It's not tyranny to require a driver's license. I think you should. I think you should consider it, but you know what? It's your comfort and cowardice that won't let you see that. Good on you. What an interesting fella. Hmm. Well, let me save this person. Give me one sec. Saved. Cool. Five percent to level five. Well, 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 what do we have here? Let's see how Kat Aspinda is doing. Kat Aspinda, of course, we've seen a few times before. She is an associate of Marcel's. She believes that she has broken the monetary system and discovered that it's all a fraud. When in reality, she basically just found out a vague, simplified understanding of how fiat currency works and how money is lended from the Fed to banks, and then banks to consumers or businesses, and then they get interest on loans and stuff, and get money and profit from that, and from that they pay back the Fed. You know, money coming in and out of circulation to get people to do things, to build businesses and homes and buying things. You get it. Anyway, she thinks that this is all a fraud. Not just that she disagrees with the system or how it works, 
She thinks it is an illegal fraud. She's wrong. So, uh, let's check it out. Vest Demon, thanks for 100 bits. Oh, she also is in trouble because she stopped paying her mortgage and car payment when this happened because she decided she thinks fiat currency is a fraud and therefore she shouldn't have to pay her debts. So. We have my sisters are here. My sisters. Thank you, Peter, for that. I will take a look later. Sisters are here today. Guys, I got a treat. And you guys, if you don't know, I know you guys know the, the young ladies that's here uh, gracing our presence here on Icons. But today, old school meets new school. But the catch is old school is the new school. Because we are reintroducing the old school of freedom and self sovereignty to the American people. And it's being received. I feel like he thought this intro out in his head and it sounded much cleaner than it's coming out. It's coming out kind of like muddled. What's your message here? Old school is new school. New school is the old school. Don't call it a comeback, except it is a comeback. With open arms all over the world. And today, uh, I'm going to introduce our family again. They are not guests, but family. They can come in, raid the refrigerator, camp out in the, in the <laughs> room. <laughs> and they don't have to worry about any hostility. First, let me introduce you. Uh, should Kat be a Spender. given. Hi, Kat. Hey, Sarge, how you doing? My brother from another mother. No. <laughs> you all, oh, please stop. You, know, you all know us from our... Um, Sovereign Souls Unite in our conversations on One New Earth. And she's our warrior, um, you know, on the front line that has been doing all this amazing job exposing the corruption and the outright criminality of the people who claim they work for we the people in Washington State. And she's doing a great job. Kat is also into Pizzagate, QAnon type stuff. Great job. And now, I would like to. <laughs> Thanks, sir. <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> I would like to, <laughs> to, to my other sister here from Arizona, who has had a, a very interesting week. In the last seven days, she went from being like um, um, very low key to being known by millions and millions of people. Okay, and. Um, I want to introduce you guys to Mickey Khan. Okay, how you doing, Miss Mickey? Good, thanks for having me. I hate to bring this up, but anyone else who has ADHD, the Alex Chu immortality ring bullshit is actually a pretty good fidget toy. Just doing this, the little connection it makes when you're kind of fiddling with your fingers is pretty satisfying. And if anyone wants to start making these and turn them into a hit fidget toy, I would request 5% off the top, please. Someone get on that. Have me, Sarge. This is really good to be here. I have Thanks to, I have to train, like, say that because I know you by your real name. So, I, you know, I have to say Mickey Khan. I don't know. You know I don't want to um, put your government name out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so last week, you did, you did something that's very um, uh, amazing. What happened? Well, the bottom line is, I think there are a lot of people on, I call it the front line, you know, fighting this lawfare battle. And I just really want to give a huge, a huge shout. Non-binary says, I do not recognize the authority of this streamer, that there is a flag with golden tassels on it, and that's a Navy court. I'm not a Navy officer and therefore cannot be forced to watch this stream, which is why I'm here voluntarily, because Re Hannah Reloaded is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Shout out to every single person that's ever dealt with these courts. I mean... There the more you fidget, the longer you live. I'm immortal. I didn't even have to cut anyone's head off. Their entire job is to, you know, is is to basically impoverish us and to break up families and um, to to steal and rip children from, you know, homes. And the, the, the hate for CPS runs so deep in these communities. Foreclose on, on home. Which I understand CPS isn't perfect and doesn't serve communities great a lot of the time but they're not upset because of those reasons they're upset because they abused or neglected their children and then their children were taken away illegally and at the end of the day it's like we, i don't think people realize the magnitude of this deception 
Um, when I learned that each of these states had been basically uh, vacated in 1871 and they came back as foreign corporations, I think to me right away that just hit home. I said, oh, well, that 1871. Oh, boy. That's genius. You know, now they can acquire every three letter agency, every court, every police precinct, and they can really essentially do a complete foreign invasion in in. Uh, such a covert way. Again, so sovereign citizens have this narrative that the company was, or co company, country was secretly taken over. The year depends. For her, it seems to be 1871. For others, it's the passing of the 13th, 14th Amendments. Um, some of them, it's the introduction of the Fed. The year varies, but either way, they think at some point, the United States was covertly transferred from a government of the people for the people by the people you know which people it was transferred into a private corporation that only exists in order to defraud and hurt citizens to benefit whoever they are at the top uh illuminati freemasons whatever that we the people don't even realize that we're still giving them power and authority over us when they have absolutely none they have no power. The only power they have over us is our tacit agreement to contract with them and to keep going back. So in Maricopa County, I realized that we were really operating in dishonor, that this is actually... Why is it just Maricopa County? Is there something going on in Maricopa County? Because, like, there was a lot of the election fraud conspiracies coming out of there, too. Like, what are we doing? You guys okay? Like going and storming into a Honeywell and trying to declare and decree over their board meeting. The fact is they're not public and these are not public buildings. They're private. They're operating in the private and we're storming in there thinking that we have some say legally. We don't lawfully. We do. Those are supposed to be synonyms of one another. Mm. As in legally, they are working within their corporate legal fiction. Mm -hmm. I'm walking into their boardroom setting, you know, and they're just there to hold up an illusion of control and government. So as soon as we... 1871 comes from the year that Congress created the District of Columbia. That makes sense. All as a... That's another... Um, that's another time that they... Because they think that the federal government only applies to the District of Columbia. Doesn't, of course. But it's an argument they'll use. People realize that we've been contracting with this farce. And that all we have to do is serve them and notify them of who they are and who we are and then walk away and go form our own pmas our own private member associations where we can start to fortify and protect one another outside of the corruption and and stand up to the corruption that way because really this does have to happen in mass now people have to wake up and realize this is just a wizard behind a curtain and his pants are down he has absolutely no jurisdiction over us you know, we, we we're looking at two governments, one of the, the Wizard of Oz. one's real. And until we step up to them and call them out as a foreign insurrectionist. No one's foreign in this story. No one is an insurrectionist. H. Baird says, even if the U.S. had been converted into a corporation, why would that matter? They'd still be the ones in power. They still set and interpret the rules we follow. The Constitution is only the Constitution because we all agree with what it does. Yeah... They seem to think that they can do magic words, that they can reveal a secret verbally, and then that will give them some sort of authority outside of the ability to back up that authority. And until we call in the military for and demand military tribunals, we are actually derelict in our duty to stand up to. She thinks she can demand military tribunals? That'd be a fun superpower. I demand tribunal upon you. You know, to these tyrants and to restore our republic. I'm glad you, I'm glad you said um, bring the military in because it's time for them to start doing their jobs if they're not doing it all the way um, behind the scenes. I, I'm getting information that they- The military's job is actually to by force create the political system that I specifically like unilaterally. It's very mature. They probably are, but it's still up to we the people to stand up for who we are. You know, you just said it, uh, um, um, de facto and de jure. We are the de jure rulers of our country, which is America. How so? America, you know, and they- In what, by what law? Like, what do you mean? He just came in and usurped that power by uh, tricking us, uh, by creating a corporation. 
that they ratified in 1878 after the act of 1871 and ever since then they have been using us as nothing but debt slaves you know saying basically you know and stealing our freedom stealing our money stealing our, our land our land <laughs> you know trying to take over our bodies even. excuse me are you worried about the government stealing your land in america Is there even half an ounce of a chance that she sees the irony in that? Does she understand why that's a fucked up thing to say? No. They even the get to children. The... It's yeah, terrible. They are... it's crazy. I have to use the bathroom real quick, so I will return while I urinate. Uh... What a... While I urinate, um, chair and flimsy flume are going to talk out their problems in therapy. So, Flimsy, take it away. Chat, you're in charge. Don't let them fight. Hello, everyone. Crazy. They think they... You hope the puppet stopped being a slut. It's gotten so much worse. That's why the puppet stays in the corner. All right. Hi, Necrophage. Thanks for 34 months. Says another month of cheese. I like cheese. Welcome to Cheese Church, where I preach about a cheese and tell you how to pair her. Today we worship Bon Bouche from Vermont Creamery. Her name is French for good mouthfeel, and she's based on the ash ripened goat cheeses of the Loire Valley. She has a velvety wrinkle rind created by the culture. I'm sorry, what's the name of this cheese again? Welcome to Cheese Church, where I preach about a cheese and tell you how to pair her. Today we worship Bon Bouche from Vermont Creamery. Her name is French for good mouthfeel. Where was this information when I was picking a new name? And she's based on the ash ripened goat cheeses of the Loire Valley. She has a velvety wrinkled rind created by the culture Geotrichum candidum, and I love that she looks like a full moon. Younger wheels are sweet, tangy, and as dense as flourless cake, but as she ages, her flavors blossom with notes of savory button mushrooms, and her texture becomes soft and runny, especially under the rind. She's best paired with rosé and honey, but today I'm plating her with jasmine peach preserves and these star-shaped lavash crackers to play off her luminescent quality. I'm also adding pistachios, which is one of my favorite pairings with goat cheeses. Bon Bouche is going to be my drag name. If I Let me know how you'd pair Bon Bouche in the comments below. Cheeses plus. That does look delicious. God damn, I love cheese. They have rule because they think we're stupid. You know, now a lot of people are, are ignorant because they have been, they have, they're living in what I call Stockholm Syndrome. You know, they, they, they are pretty sure Stockholm syndrome was debunked identifying with their captors and they don't even know it, you know, oh, you see the way this guy is. He looks good. He speaks good, but he's not for you. You know, just like you said, Nikki, this, these elections has all been a force. Uh, it's been, it's been like, we've been electing and giving them power through contract over what we should be in control of. Yeah, and, street, you know? and as foreign corporations, we on the front lines mm -hmm. have been watching as they weasel out every time we use this common law affidavit of truth or writ for warrant against them. Affidavit of truth. Um, 
we see them recuse themselves and stuff like that. So we can see that they know, you know, that they're trying, that they're basically using wordplay to enslave us. But we need to now bring that out to the front line. We need everyone to see the the manipulation. So yeah. the only way we can do that is to get all cameras on it, to get all eyes on it, to yeah. to push here and watch them run there. You know, and until we do that on the mainstream, I don't think people will truly realize because it's just the magnitude of the lie that I think a lot of Americans have a hard time grasping. But so basically, their worldview is very, this is an uncommon for conspiracy theorists. They view themselves as being in the right. The only way they can explain why they are such a small minority of the population, despite being quote unquote right, is that everyone else is brainwashed. It's just that everyone else is so deep in they don't see it. It's a necessity, otherwise the story doesn't hold up. If what they believe is so obvious to them, how could everyone else not already know it? Oh, they're all brainwashed. It's not that I'm wrong. Kat, as you know, they've done this in London. They've done this in Israel. They've done this in, you know, um, the Vatican. Those are three places. So <laughs> whenever they form this in, in, in District of Columbia, right? So whenever they form that 10 square mile radius around D.C., you know, that's their stronghold, if you will. We that don't is. have jurisdiction in there because they created it. They control it. And so what I think a lot of people really understand, need to understand now is that they use prima facie type rules. They make up laws as, prima fascia. as they go and they could rewrite laws because they're in a corporation. They just suckered you into their trap. Yeah. And they, it's really, a, it's almost an energy trap. The legislature can write and rewrite laws. The judicial system can interpret those laws and determine their constitutionality too right yeah. academy this is an energy exchange listen they rewrite it absolutely is they rewrite codes and statutes of that corporation they don't rewrite law we, uh, we, are, we codes and statutes are part of the law we are the authors of the law okay nope that's the legislature it's all in the constitution okay. and what they're doing is basically using corporate codes like if you if you create a company uh, mickey um you can make whatever rules you want for that company all right and that's what they're doing they don't even you know a lot of people think that we have I... it's it's always weird watching these things because it feels like they're stumbling their way through understanding power and how it exists but don't quite get it like they're they understand and i know that the the, the cargo cult comparison gets brought up a lot but there's a good reason they see the symbols of power and confuse them for the source of the power. They think that there are secret words or language you can use in order to overturn the system when in reality the ephemera of the system, the little symbolic things, aren't holding it up. These are extra bullshit things. In reality, it's the collective will of people in order to maintain this system that gives that system power the ability of that system to enforce its rulings that gives that system power not some arbitrary like magic words or symbolic thing right they're confusing the symbolic with the literal the symbolic with the material and it's causing them to have a complete malfunction in how they understand how the legal system works I hate when people say that we got constitutional rights. We do. I hate that too. That I mean, oh gosh, that drives me crazy. We don't have constitutional rights. We we have a constitution that protects our inalienable rights. Okay, and and people have to start looking at these people as their employees, even though um, lawfully they're not even our employees anymore. They don't even work for us. They work for the public. Yeah. Let's talk. About as an individual, you will never be the public. No individual can be the public because it is, by definition, a collective. It is the crowd. It's about the Constitution really quick, though, right? Because you have the fake, phony, false, de facto corporation, and they wrote bylaws, which they call the Constitution. Right. <laughs> Fucking what? You have their bylaws. But then over here, you have the Republic, which was vacated. And we had a trust indenture called the Constitution. Right. But the only person that could uphold those con the Constitution for the Republic were the trustees that we brought in as servants. 
Right. We currently don't have a Republic restored and we don't have any trustees. Therefore, we don't have anyone to uphold our original organic constitutions, guys. Organic we have constitution. No constitution. That's right. We don't if there was such a thing as an organic constitution, you wouldn't need to write one. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. None of your rights are de facto. There is no such thing as rights that exist in and of yourself. Rights exist as social agreements between people within groups. If you are on an island alone, you have no rights. You don't have responsibilities either, because you're alone. Rights are something we grant each other in relation to people within groups. It is not a thing that exists out there separate from human beings and our, like, like cognition. It's a thing we create their ideas of what should be allowed for people. I don't have representatives. They're using their, co their constitution of the United States of D.C. That's what right. it, they, they created a separate government in 1878. Uh, well, it started in 1871. It was rejected in 1874. I guess by the real people that uh, that were working there that didn't want to give their country over to a foreign corporation. And then they did what they always do. They did it slickly. They probably bribed people. They went and probably and and piecemealed it all the way until 1878, where it was approved and ratified. And it became the uh, the uh, uh, corporation known as the United States of D.C., not the United States of America, but the United States of the District of Columbia. And you, they usually don't even. The District of Columbia. It's not the United anything. It's just the District of Columbia. Use the rest of the word. They only use the United States. Okay. And when you see that in all caps, that's a corporation that they created. And guess what? That's what we are. That's where we are at this point right now. So all these presidents and all these congressmen and all these people in the Supreme Court and all agencies of that corporation, they are illegitimate. Fraud ends where fraud begins. So if it started in 1878, that's where we have to go back to. All right. Anything after that is like no and voided. Do these people know that no one, I hate to be this person. I don't know the, like, property ownership status of the people in this call, but at minimum, if we rolled back every law from the 1870s, from after the 1870s, at least two-thirds of this group of people would not be able to vote. Probably more than. Yeah. Well, Star, yeah. you know, the, the other thing, too, is that... Um, that 10 mile radius they call DC, right. they use the zip code system, which is the zone improvement plan, right? Mm -hmm. To put a, a fake fictional overlay over the United States using the zip code system. Yes. Yes. It's, what do you mean fictional? It's fictional in the sense that it's arbitrary, but it's a bureaucratic organizational structure. What the fuck? And so now a lot of us are finding out, wait a minute, why what does zip mean? Yeah. What does that even mean? You know, like I grew up learning about how to put a zip code on your mm. envelope, you know, how to write it in school. Nobody ever explained what that was or what. They probably didn't. You just don't remember. It means. And now we're finding out that that's just the fictional overlay okay. using legal descriptions. Um, and Wait, what did you think? Do you think zip codes were natural before? Yeah, they're to identify an area in the country to make it easier to ship things, to make it easier to get mail places. And APN numbers versus the meets and bounds, which is the real land. And people are starting to figure out, wait yeah. a minute, uh, this is just really as fake as it gets. <laughs> I mean, can it get any faker? I mean, every day I, I look at something and I see it differently now than 10 years ago because well, our eyes me, have been me, open. Let me clarify to what she's saying. This Why is do they just have them guys. like on screen in the corner like this too? That's annoying. And if you guys can. It, it... It's enough of that one. Hmm. <sighs> Oh, her and the other lady went to Maricopa County and served them a bullshit lawsuit. Wow. 
Wow, we got like a dozen crackpots here. How can they ignore us now? Both copies or? I would like to stamp both copies, yes. She's your keep one. Keep one, stamp it. Have one stamp and we'll retain it, please. Thank you. Look at all the filming. No, they're separate documents. But they're both the same, so they're just separate? Separate documents. We have copies of the originals, so we're just giving you copies for your. Okay, so if I make a copy of the first page and stamp it, will that be okay? That'd be great. Perfect. On both documents. Yes, ma'am. We have evidence and service, so if you know the <laughs> <laughs> oh, they know that <laughs> You're fine, though. How, how would I know that? I just, I just, no, I was just saying I didn't want to I was a wrestler for years, uh, and dude, that's my biggest fear is in the behind me. Are you definitely? Where'd that guy's arms go? Where? You, you knew they were coming, huh? Well, you're yes. Yes. Huh? Are you surprised? Do you, do you know what's going on in this time here? You can't talk about it. You'll be served next week or next time. You'll be served next week to the random cop over what? Once you guys are served and you have to put on notice of what's going on, then you need to make a hard decision. You have to make the hard decision. You know, my dad was a deputy sheriff, and it ruined our family. The, the, the police academy is a six-month training program. It's an MK Ultra extension program. Oh no, MK Ultra! And you guys are. I think if the police were forced to drop acid, they'd maybe be a little chiller. Taught to not ask questions and to just follow orders, and that's not okay. We can't have that kind of world anymore. So. You have guns turned on its own people. Yeah, because you're sorry. Ladies If there's a church of cheese, why am I not the Pope? Or the Pope at? Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much. They got shushed. <laughs> We're nailing it! You're in a public building. Okay, they're, they're, they're filming. So, so we just serve those here first. What police next step here? Yeah, so that's one of three. The second one is if you're notifying them of their personal liability, and every single person in this room is personally liable because they are currently protected. Wow, she's doing the Marcel speech. You're all personally liable. I'm a little concerned Marcel's gonna see this lady and fall in love. Like, it's gonna be like a TV show or something, where he sees her and then it cuts to his reverse shot, and it's like like slow motion and music, and it's like, do, 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 and it's got that soft focus, like Star Trek when they show a lady that Captain Kirk is interested in, and it's like, they smudged Vaseline over the lens. It's like that. <laughs> Man, I wish I could articulate human emotion instead of having to fall back on shot descriptions from media I've seen. That would be so much easier to communicate if I knew words for feelings. <laughs> you guys might not realize this, but this is a foreign invasion. This is treason, okay? Whoever is giving your treatment right now is a foreign corporation. They're not it's like my mom fucked a TV tropes page. They're masquerading as government. Janerdi says, my favorite um, QI trivia related to the old is the Pope a Catholic comment. The person called the Pope isn't a Catholic, and the head of the Catholic Church isn't actually called the Pope. That's interesting. I want you guys to know this because I don't want anyone to get in trouble. I don't want anyone to end up in Gitmo. Are they also working they're, for they're a corporation? All, they're all working they for a corporation. Every person here who has guns pointed against we the people mm -hmm. is, a foreign, is an act of foreign insurrection. Because none of these people have ever signed an oath of office to us. They are not legitimate. And if you guys want to look at the paper that we sent here today, we went ahead and did a forensic report on all the people that are currently signing oaths of office. 
They've never signed an oath of office to us. They've signed Marcus Drake says, now I was always a Star Wars guy, but from my understanding, the Star Trek Captain Kirk's uh, type was women. Optional. <laughs> you know, this is actually, a lot of people think that. Pop culturally, you would think that Kirk is a ladies man, and that happens from time to time. But Kirk, Kirk's true love has always been the Starship Enterprise. He's only fallen in, he's fallen in love with several women throughout the series. Um, when he lost his memory and went to the indigenous people's planet. He fell in love. Um, was it City on the Edge of Forever? Was that him or Bones? Anyway, that'll happen. But, like, a lot of the time he's trying to charm women in, like, a James Bond, like, honeypot way where he's trying to get information or something. He isn't just horny all the time. Pop culture has decided Kirk is way hornier than he actually is in the show. He is a ham, but he's not that horny. Most of the time. This is an act of war. Over our borders, we are not safe here. We are not putting out a public broadcast to notify everyone of the dangers of the vaccine. We have informed them of all this. Anti-vax too. This information now, so now they can write their action. We're walking in safe and honor. You know that Biden was not properly elected, and he's committing treason by letting. Oh wow! It's all the flavors of nutbag. We got. Sovsits, anti-vaxxers, election deniers. The whole gang's here. Border. He's letting people come in. Who, who, who's coming in? We, we don't even not, know. We, not we don't know who's here. coming we in. This morning, the crackpots aren't sending their best. Sad. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for sending us Thank you. Freedom of speech, freedom of peacefully assembled. Yeah. We're not here to harm anyone. Thank you. Thank you. Fenikagami says, The thing that annoys me about sovereign citizens is that they prove propaganda and Republicans right. There's a crime element that menaces our society while leeching off its goodwill and services. It's sovereign citizens. They use our roads, utilities, health care if we ever socialize it. And what do they give back? Nothing but terrorizing citizens, feeding cops paranoia, gumming up the system, and stealing stuff. And because most of them are white, they get away with it for ages. So you can make them count. All of us are sharp. Uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Sheriff. It's my nightmare to get trapped in this elevator. The new news is hiring. Sorry. Yeah, the new news is hiring. We can use some protection against, you know, the insurgency. She came up. The insurgency. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, how did they they came back out of the elevator? What the fuck? We're going back out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's just too many people in it. Are they just fucking around? What are we doing? Because that's very important. Do you know why you take an oath of office? Man, we're not here to answer any questions. We're just here to preserve the peace. Well, you work for, we'll put you on notice. Uh, you, you work for the sheriff's department, correct? Yes. Do you know what uh, the position of sheriff is? We, we know it well, ma'am. It's, well, could you answer that question? I'm not here to answer any questions. And neither well, my if you took an oath We're here to preserve the peace, and that's it. Right, okay. So, so if you took an oath of office, it's because you took that oath of office through a constitution. And the reason the constitution was put in place is to protect the people's rights constitution into a corporate constitution find her goddamn channel one earth news that's gotta not be hers though this is 100 percent of your support keeps one new earth independent i'm not giving you money I'm not doing it okay and this is really really rude awakening to realize that these people are same people.
Sure, hey, you're on the car, right? Yeah, yeah, Michelle did. Are we yeah. sure we're not bringing on? That was fun. An enemy I want it's good to let us charge it to my room. Let me see you gotta, you gotta keep it fun. Oh, I don't have a room. Right <laughs> you gotta keep it fun, though. The under the access panel. Charge it to Hunter Biden. We'll charge it to Hunter Biden. <laughs> a Hunter Biden joke. Cutting edge jokes from four years ago. Thanks to everyone who came today. Thanks for being brave. This is definitely stepping outside the box. Are they box. messing with us now? Yeah. This is what we're going to do. No, it's just... Oh, they're probably yeah, passing the bus. Did you really? Yeah. This is stepping outside the box. I left it one. Fenikagami says, and to be clear, I understand most sob sits are victims. They're desperate and need help. We need more and better social programs to help people deal with their problems and not fall into this. We need better mental health and social and emotional education to help people learn not to be afraid of their own feelings and learn to help each other. Agreed. What was Chili guilty of? Um, obstruction. Obstruction. He got six months. He started immediately. He is already in jail. Uh, we're close to the wait limit, uh, I think, maybe? It's under a year, so he will not be in prison, I don't think. I think he will remain in jail unless Nevada laws are different, which they may be. But, like, in Michigan, I'm pretty sure if it's under a year, you stay in jail. You don't actually get booked into prison. So, I don't know. <laughs> okay. They, they trapped us. Okay, now so. we're going to have an earthquake. We're going to have to climb out no. the ceiling. Are we okay. Okay. Just don't manifest anything. Don't take the stairs. Yeah, again, this, in California, is especially, you're going to get freaking hit on it. Okay, I want to know. Oh, oh my God. God. He does have another case. He does have another case that was very similar. <laughs> oh. It's like nobody working. Look, there's no one working. There's no one freaking working. This is unbelievable. What is going on? A lot of them might be working from home. I don't know. It's a bunch of cubicles. Can you even see inside them? There's no one working. What the heck is going on? What do you mean, what the heck is going on? <laughs> Have they never been in a big office building before, like a government building? Not all of the space is being utilized all at the same time. <laughs> Well, they're going to do like a video filming from here because she's like, here's a thing I can exploit. Lincoln and I are going to give a little education. This is Lincoln's wheelhouse. Yeah, I don't know what day of the week this is supposed to be that they did this. Let's see. It was uploaded six days ago, which would have been a Thursday, I believe. No, rather a Tuesday. But I don't know if that's the day they recorded it. Okay, so I just want everyone to know this woman is a badass. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. So next level. Well, one second, one second. This side of the screen. I'm going to go around between the County Assessor's Office. So, okay. Hold on okay. a second. I want to get. I'm going to be prepared for this. I want to actually get the words out right. Then they claim them. When you. You're tacit. Oh, thank you. Yeah. They call it a heat crab nose for a reason. Go ahead. Well, so what I think it's important to note is that just about every county right now is trying to steal your land. Not just trying, but they did. And they usually do it through tacit, non-consensual agreements. What? So when you signed or you registered uh, to vote here, when you signed a, a marriage certificate, when you signed your children into the hospital, when you signed their birth certificate, when you signed your driver's license, all of these things are scams to not only steal everything that you own, your entire estate, your children, and your land. Now the way that they've actually- And your land. Jesus Christ. Probably comes from a place of severe insecurity. Don't know why. Feels very insecure in her property, what she considers her property, which includes her children. Children aren't property, but she seems to want to say that they are. <sighs> Stolen the land is quite fascinating. They just created an overlay of zip codes, then they claim them. That's not how things work. The zip code thing makes me wonder if any of this is getting stolen from David hyphen colon Win Miller. Because the whole zip codes thing and he thinks that the post office is in charge of the world. The thing about it is they can't claim your land. Land can only be passed from mm -hmm. one sovereign to the next. It cannot be passed to a foreign corporation. Land can be whatever people decide it is. Because literally we're talking about arbitrary pieces of fucking ground. And who owns things is a social agreement. <laughs> so what they're doing is they're claiming your land because you haven't. 
And that way when you die, they can take it from your heirs. So that's why we need to get a little smarter about operating in the private, setting up our own private trust, and claiming our land. It's like far and away. All you need is a bunch of little, you know, white flags and some posts so you can get your meets and bounds, and then you can claim your land, and therefore you can then pass it on to your heirs. No! You're talking about a very specific period of history where they were doing a specific land giveaway? That's not how that works. So one of the things we're doing immediately for operational restoration is we're setting up a PMA, a social compact, where we're providing refuge for people that want to come back and get their land back in the county. We're talking 4.5 million people in Maricopa County, of which they have every single person, this right here, this Maricopa County Assessor's Office. Which means no, one no one's here working. No one's even here All working. They've already stolen your land, and they're just banking on the fact that you're- Not stolen. Assessed. Sometimes, if I may, uh, the way how the way how it's done. So you have you have a land, you have a physical land that can be only described in physical meets and bounds. And um, when you when you tell that to surveyors, you go to purchase a property. Let's actually wait for the gentleman to to hear this too, because this is very important. I'm, I'm hoping Check that they have the 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 Did they know that a decent number of the founding fathers were surveyors at one point or another? So, when you go to purchase a property, you have a realtor, right? And they show you the actual land. They show you the, the front yard, they show you the backyard, they show you the house, you walk through the house, right? You love the barbecue and say, yeah, I want this house, okay? Then they shove you through this escrow process. Mm -hmm. And at the end... Escrow is literally just... Oh God! Just to keep your the escrow is like the waiting period process in which paperwork and stuff is dealt with, and the transactions are going through, and everything's getting legally checked, and like the titles getting moved over. Like it's literally an administrative period by which the actual purchase and acquisition of a house or property is handled, because a large purchase like property or a home and the property that it sits on are large, complicated legal agreements that require a lot of paperwork to different departments, which is why when you get a mortgage or a house, eventually, if you have a real estate agent like I did when I bought a house, eventually, after that escrow period, they're going to have you come in and sit down and fucking initial 30 million pieces of paper that are copies of things that they filed elsewhere, because again... It's a big process to file things correctly for both you and the seller. It's, it's, it's not evil. It's just a bureaucratic process that makes sure all the paperwork goes through correctly and everything's legal. Five, six, seven, eight. <sighs> so I'm calling twice now. We've seen this group is interesting. In order for them to take you, in uh, so that they could. There they go. This is the version of the video with the microphone attached. Have no way to to pay for anything. So anyway. So oh, they did an outside thing. How fun! Come on up, Richard. Do you guys want to add anything to that? No. Okay. I'll give you this mic. Why'd you come here? Why'd you come here today, Richard? Oh, well, I saw- Is this a park or is this one of their houses? I saw the Batman Mickey Con symbol up again. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got my car and drove 2,100 miles. That's why. Did you all see it? The meeting, the board meeting she was at? I said, there's Mickey again. It's time to, time to head to Arizona. That's, how I, that's what happened. <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. So Richard's not afraid of creating an energy shift in any room he goes into. And it really... An energy shift? What we're doing is disrupting energy. They've been disrupting our energy and bullying us into their position. But now we're just going to step out of that box and disrupt their energy, which is what we did. That's what we're going to do again mm -hmm. and again and again until they resign. But in the meantime, what we need to be doing with our energy is dispersing it into the rebuild. And, and I cannot believe she believes this bullshit. And being willing to step up and hold position out of necessity, because it takes a brave person right now.
to hold position as, let's say, governor of the Republic of Arizona. Who's willing to do that? You know what I'm saying? Anyone Is she fishing to be the governor of this fake republic that she wants to create in Arizona? It's a bold strategy. HBaird says, energy shift when entering the room. Sounds like a euphemism for extreme BO. Know anyone? <laughs> I mean, it's like funny how, you know, we are literally in this position where we're going to... Based on this property and how these people are dressed, I'm getting, like, bored, rich asshole energy. Like, Nepo babies who are really dumb and don't know the world, but they're very upset, even though they're already wealthy. Like, they don't know why they're upset, but they're upset. So they come up with this bullshit to be mad about. <laughs> like, it feels like nonsense. We need to start seating seats. And even if we don't have a big, fat brick building, we can still seat them. We're seating it right now. We're seating, seating the idea right now. And that's all you can do. Everything starts with an idea. You can't build a sky rise without an idea first. So. So I'll just tell a quick story. And, and if you interrupt me, if you have a question. Okay, please. Uh, so... I got out of college. I went to the army. I was a medic in the army. Honorably discharged. Uh, I took the discount. The one person clapping. Woo! You did a job! Woo! In Maryland, where I was raised, uh, for 50% off tuition, I went to the R.H. Smith School of Business, which at the time was the seventh best business school in the country, above Wharton. Ooh, business school. Were all the clown schools full? It's a business school within Maryland. Sorry, I'm a dick. It's very difficult. Um, and 9-11 happened. <clears throat> oh, God, 9-11 out of nowhere. I came on college campus, and it was Maryland, so New Jersey and New York, there's a lot of uh, sororities and fraternities. Everyone's crying, right? Remember that? And I said, well, a lot of people seem to be dead, but kerosene can't melt steel, because I like physics. It's my favorite. Oh, no, he's a 9-11 conspiracy theorist. Fucking kerosene. Kerosene. Favorite study thing to study. So it just it's not possible. Airplanes, jets, they run diesel and kerosene. They call it jet fuel, but really it's just cleaned kerosene and diesel. And I said, it doesn't matter what you do under pressure in a vacuum with an accelerant, you can't melt steel girders that way. It's just you don't need to melt them. You need to weaken them to the point where they can no longer be the structural backbone of the skyscraper and they buckle and bend. Impossible. Wow, the dean didn't like that. <laughs> the dean. 9-11 truther house <laughs> most people didn't i'm sure many of you have seen a 20 dollars bill folded up and you can see the twin towers it's origami it's three folds it's an airplane and use the tower i usually base my currency on mad magazine fold-ins hours on one side depending on the other so 20 years go by you know and no one cared so i went to work for merrill lynch and about two years after i was working for merrill lynch that's when i signed my first nda that's the end of the video. So that was lovely. That's just great. What is this one lady's name? Mickey. Mickey Clan. Her last name is Clan. That's certainly a choice, huh? Hmm. And they have. Hmm. I'll have to find where her channel is. Mickey Clan. Operation Restoration. Oh, that image is definitely AI generated. We are the beating heart of freedom. The People's Operation Restoration is the mechanism by which the coordinated strategy, planning, and specific objectives are delivered to the Army of Light comprised of millions of individuals worldwide. We provide overarching planning and guidance and enjoin factors of the group and national efforts, logistics, intelligence, changing goals, coordinated messaging, and communications. That sounds weird verbiage. Hmm. Gitara says, I thought this was a Sovset gathering about property rights. What the fuck was that? The bedrock of their belief system. <sighs> about us. 
Oh, is this the About Us page? That's lame. A message from us. Empowering the people with the spirit of liberty. Oh yeah, look at those AI images. You know, AI that shit is. Ugh. Much AI. Very gross. Hmm. Join our movement of education, empowerment, mobilization, and daily imperfect massive action. It took 56 signatures to declare independence. Imagine the change we can bring when united, not only together as Americans, but with our freedom-loving brothers and sisters throughout the world. History is shaped by those who dare to defy and dream of our great nation being reborn. Together, our fellow Americans, we can stand against the tide of oppression that has washed over us. Take our hand, stand shoulder to shoulder with us and millions of others as we reclaim liberty for future generations. Through collective responsibility, constructive intent, and hope for positive change and a brighter tomorrow, we invite you to join the machine, the People's Operation Restoration. Hmm... Trying to figure out if this was written by chat GPT too, because the verbiage is a little weird. The People's Declaration. We the pe oh. oh. We the people of the United States, in order to restore our once perfect union. <laughs> to be clear, the original declaration never claimed it was creating a perfect union. It was trying to establish a more perfect union. But okay. Reading comprehension. Reestablish justice. Ensure. <laughs> ensure. Ensure domestic tranquility. Provide for the common defense of all. Promote the general we welfare. And secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. To ordain and establish the restorative movement of the people. Operation Restoration for the United States of America. We declare and decree the courts, public servants, and all persons responsible for harming the people be held accountable for their actions and harm caused that our nation operate under the law of the land, our cherished constitution, and charters of freedom. We are the people of the United States of America, and we stand together under the banner of freedom. Freedom is the one thing that unites us all. Liberty flows through all of our veins. <laughs> mm. Who we are. We're truckers, moms, students, nurses, doctors, investors, county workers, teachers, cowboys, <laughs> cowboys, <laughs> loggers, engineers, sanitation workers, professors, cashiers, flight attendants, pilots, sales reps, physical therapists. We are fathers, mothers, sisters. You already used moms. You already used moms. Why are you saying mothers again? Sisters, brothers, married, single, divorced, separated, gay, straight. We are black, white, Asian, Native American, a multitude of nationalities. We are immigrants, natives, short, tall, fat, skinny. We are living men and women of the free world. To our elected officials that believe they rule us, you work for us. Our constitution was written to provide enough power to act on a national level, but not enough to derive deprive the people of the fundamental rights, liberties, and freedoms. People are prepared to seek this through, to see this through, rather, as we have seen all of our fights for freedom through, and as in the past we will know victory and we will prevail and prosper. Once again, as we did in January 2022, we extend our hands in love and friendship to our brave and courageous neighbor to the north, our Canadian brothers and sisters. Together, we lock arms with our brethren in, Aus brethren in Australia, New Zealand, England, and India, united in our common cause of freedom and overthrowing the yoke of tyranny. Together, we shall restore our freedoms and liberties for ourselves and posterity. We are people of the free world, unified in our courage and fortitude as the people's operation restoration. Let the golden light of liberty burn bright. The power of the pen will keep us free, men. Dated January 2024. First day. <laughs> well, that's certainly something. How did I learn about sovereign citizens? I don't remember when I first learned about it, actually. Probably in my conspiracy theory research stuff, because I debunk and I'm interested in the psychology of conspiracy theories. Hmm. Common Law Academy. Videos. They have a whole video section. The greatest show on earth. Oh boy. Election denier stuff. Yeah. 
pretty much what you would expect. Our partners. Common Law Academy, Go USA, Opscore, Million Charges for the people. We are the people to us. To dot us. Well, those are some graphic design. That's our passion logos. Well, we're going to have to look at some of these at some point. Sick. All right. So we did it. We did another stream. Chili's in jail, so we won't be hearing from him for like six months unless he gets out early for some reason. I don't know what the jail crowdedness situation is in Nevada and if he'll have a chance to get out early. But Either way, I hope everyone has a great night. I will return tomorrow. Seems like the dual streaming did better today with the new uh, internet extender thing, so... I will return tomorrow. So I'll see y'all then. Thanks, YouTube. Like the stream. Um, and that's it. Love you, Mr. Blast. The rest of you, have a great night, and I'll see you soon. It's always fun hanging out. So yeah, see you then. Adios. Bye.